and young Ottens, who was developing as a, uh, a terrific player for Richmond around the middle of the ground. But it's certainly up to, uh, it's Matthew Scarlett on screen there, it's up to the players when the ball hits the ground. And Geelong are led magnificently uh, by Gary Hocking in that area. And Peter Riccardi, I think, has just stepped up another notch as well around the middle of the ground. You mentioned Kilpatrick, they'll miss him, but they still have a very, very even line up, the Cats. On the other hand, uh, you know, we're looking at now the Tigers. Um, they will rely heavily, I think, on Brendan Gale being able to uh, just to relieve young Ottens around the middle of the ground and maybe slip forward and take a mark or two and kick a goal, as will Ben Holland and Ottens. The, uh, there's a big uh, reliance there. And, of course, the, the uh, smaller midfielders, Hilton, uh, Matthew Rogers, etc., Dragasevic, who I believe will start on the bench, and Matthew Knights is a terrific leader for the Tigers. Well, Bobber Thompson getting ready for battle this afternoon, as is, of course, the coach of the Tigers in Danny Frawley. Still doesn't have Matthew Richardson or Wayne Campbell or Cameron, so he's got a fair bit to overcome, but he's down there having a chat to Paul Couch. Thanks, Hutto, and I've got Danny Frawley, the Richmond coach. Danny, what have you tried to improve this week? You were pretty close last week. What areas have you tried to improve on? Oh, maybe just our intensity. I thought uh, Carlton's pressure and the way they attacked the ball was uh, very good for the whole game. I thought our first half was, was very good in that area and maybe just fell away in, in some certain areas of, you know, just the tackle Smothers and Shepherds where we've been very good. Um, you know, Carlton's attack on the ball and the body was uh, very good last week. And your goal kicking with Matthew Richards and Ed Ottens and Holland need to do more? Yeah, well, um, it's probably a blessing in disguise, the roof being closed today, because, as you know, it doesn't suit the big boys, so I was really happy to see the roof closed, yeah, because, you know, against Sydney and St Kilda, they've been terrific, uh, really catching the ball for us down forward, and obviously we, did, we had no input whatsoever from those guys, so, yeah, it's been stressed that we can't afford to have any passengers. Uh, our wins against Sydney and St Kilda were good, where we had contributions from everyone all over the ground, and, uh, you know, we just can't afford to take passengers into the game that we had last week. Now, Gary Hocking's been in sensational form. Will Joel Bowden get the job there? Oh, no, I think that uh, Duncan Callaway will be a fair chance. Duncan's had some terrific jobs, uh, you know, over the, over the year, and it uh, probably suits, suits young Buddha. Buddha's uh, been in sensational form. Like, he's been averaging 10 clearances a game. He's taken over from you, Couchy, but uh, you've taught him too many tricks. But uh, listen, he's been sensational, and uh, he's, a, he's a player that we've got to watch closely, yeah. Now, the, the zone, will you drop it back for Ben Graham? Will you... Yeah, well, we will. I think we'll, we'll actually get our half back line. They might have a bit to do with it too, because you know he's a prolific kick, and we'd like him to kick short all day. But uh, you know, I suppose from a spectacle point of view, you like to see the long kicks, but not from my point of view today. Now, where do you see Geelong's strength? Just all over the ground? Yeah, listen, I think the way they're played and the way uh, Mark Thompson straightened them up. You know, a lot of credit's got to go to him, and I think. You know, the players have been around for a number of years. Bizzle and Houlihan have really stood up. They're very even. Uh, you know, even their bench. Their bench come on and create a bit of havoc too. So they've had evenness all over the ground. You know, Mench has probably been in career best form. Mooney's really given something to kick to up around the half forward line. And, of course, young young Barry Stone has been uh, young Barry Stone and, uh, you know, chips in for a couple of goals. So they're, they're, they're forwards. You know, their talls and their smalls are something we're going to have to watch today. Good luck, Danny. Good on you, Couchy. Danny Frawley, young Barry Stoneham and young Gary Hocking and young Matthew Knights leading the Tigers out onto the ground here at Colonial. As we talked about, the roof is on today and certainly that will make for good conditions for footy despite the fact that it is raining outside in Melbourne. We'll take a break from Colonial as young Buddha gets ready for the start of the match and then we'll come back for the bounce of the ball. Welcome to Colonial Stadium. And it's Geelong and Richmond, round eight. And the roof is certainly on, and both teams getting ready to go out. Paul Couch is with us, and also Ian Robertson. Gentlemen, good afternoon in your selections. Good afternoon, Hutto, and uh, I like Geelong because they've just been more consistent. Richmond have been very good last week against Carlton for two and a half quarters, just a lack of consistency. Uh, goal scoring opportunities. Ottens wasn't very good last week up against Sylvania, probably play against Ben Graham, but I just think overall Geelong will share the workload and just be too good. Well, I better tip Richmond because I'm right in the middle of two people who absolutely adore the Cats. I don't know why. <laughs> I think that uh, when Danny Frawley spoke with his, in his interview with you, uh, Paul, yes. he named or nominated the name of the game is constant pressure, and that's what they've got to do. The whole players 18 on the ground. Consistency. Well, he talked about Callaway going under hockey, and he's done that yep. at the start of this game. 
So the Cats have lost just once for the year. The Tigers have won three and lost four. And King has been a big part of Geelong and already gets them into attack. Steinford Corrigan, a late change, came in to replace Kilpatrick. They were sideways for a while. Hocking out to Burns. It's a tough ask in the air, but he did pretty well. Rode the bidders can bump. Got Clark on the outside. He uses him. He'll use his pace. He might go for them. No, he said as he goes low with the kick. It was tough for Houlihan. He did pretty well. He screwed it back, and Benny Gale, like an experienced defender, was there. This is Hilton now, escaping with it, and can carry it right outside 50. You can hear how noisy it is already. It's a pretty big crowd. It is. It's the best crowd I've seen here, Hutto, in uh, the times that we've been here over the last eight, seven or eight weeks. I went to long are going well. The Cats will come. Bowden finds Knights. Looks like Steinford has the job on the Richmond skipper this afternoon. Tawny on Burns. Gaspar. Now it's can he can Richmond find a good forward usable option? Holland against McGrath. Yeah, That'll be a good battle throughout the afternoon. Play on is the call. Bitterscombe. A little bit locked against the boundary line. Turned himself inside out. It wasn't too bad. Had a couple of players. Broderick, the feed to Chapley was pretty good. Sets it up for the square. We'll go looking for Ottens. And at the back, Rogers came flying through. Oh, great tackle. Tried the impossible. Actually, yeah. Matthew Rogers, I think, then was surprised, Couchy, when the ball came through the pack and he got his hands on it. You thought he was, had if his own space. If he looked at that again, yeah. he'd four nines out of five, I've got to grab that mark. That's been the key to Geelong's play this year. Tackling. Well, a boundary throw in, and the Tigers are a chance to score. It's deep in there. Full forward line, Brad Ottens and Ben Graham, Joel Bowden, and still no and, score in this game. And Robo, they brought the boundary lines in about three metres in the forward pocket, so it's going to leave a less space for the, the backman to work in. Yeah, there you see the lines there, they've moved them in a bit, three metres, which makes the ground very small and making it hard for Ben Graham when he's kick outs to give space. Ottens gets uh, first touch on the ball, Callaway reasonably well tackled, I would have thought. What I mean by space is when he's kicking to the forward pocket, because the Richmond will probably put their zone back further so he can only use the space short into the forward pocket. So he hasn't got a lot of room to work in Ben Graham. Raleigh was the tackler. They are our umpires for this match. John Harvey, the uh, more experienced, about to bounce the ball deep in the Tigers' full forward area. Ottens gets it down. Broderick overruns it. Bowden, still a chance the Tigers. Working hard in their full forward area to tr restrict the Cats' opportunities to clear the ball. And the umpire once again will bounce only a matter of 20 metres from the Richmond goal. Right in front of their goal. So Mark Thompson is trying to probably check on the matchups, I guess, in the early part of the game. One matchup, Robbo, Matthew Knights and Carl Steinford. So the bounce of the ball once again. Ottens has had his hands on the ball in that full forward line. The ball now with Harley. Harley's left foot kick carries the players in the area of the wing. Andrew Callaway tries to get the handball to the advantage of one of his teammates. It didn't quite work. It's gathered by Chaffee. Chaffee off the left, kicks into half foot. It's a good kick. It's a very good kick because it did advantage Ben Holland and made it difficult for McGrath to stretch. Ben Holland from inside the square goes directly towards goal. Tigers can't take the mark. Off the ground, it's a goal. A goal of the Tigers kicked by Andrew Callaway. It's great work by Andrew Callaway. Kicked the ball off the wing there. He's pushed down from his half-back wing position. He's up against Adam Hullian. It was good work there. Ben Holland needs to lift here today. It was a bit disappointing last week against Carlton. Went long and direct, put pressure on the backman. And Callaway, smart thing, he didn't pick the ball up. Goal. And he's playing on the halfback, playing against Adam Houlihan. So good it's kick, good work. Very good kick too to uh, put the pressure on the defence in the goal square. Long and direct. Richmond bench at the start of the game. Dragger Civic, Harrison Poyas and Tivendale. So King, again doing the ruck work. Sanderson, well tackled. No, he got away. Got the handball. Scarlett's kick, as you saw, pretty ineffective. And Bowden gets Richmond going. Chappie, Daffy. The only one they're missing is Laffy. Bittescombe, very low. And it's not bad. Knights has got some space to work in. Had Holland in short, but he go. Well, he picked out a man. King dropped the mark. He's still got time. Screws it back into the square. Fiora from the back. Scarlett got high. 
and kept in by Ottens, which probably wasn't a great thing to do in the end. Schalf. Well, not much on offer. He goes for the boundary line and finds it. It's a clever kick. Well, smart work. Had no other option there, but Clinton King should have made it. And most of the opportunities there on the half full of flag. You just got to make half chances. It's a perfect kick by Knight. Set it up beautifully. It just gives the Tigers their confidence. You need a couple early to get that going for them. A good last week. You know, they're in this game. Terrific crowd in here. Sunday afternoon football on seven. Colonial Stadium. Gale doing the ruck work. Tries to get it down to the front. And a pack of players there. So the umpire will bounce. Only one score in the game so far. That's a goal kicked by Andrew Callaway. And there's 20 around that ball, Robbo. Most definitely. It's 20 players. Hard to get space to work in. Use your, your skills. Bounce of the ball on centre wing. King gets his fist to it. Broderick. Well done by Paul Broderick. Snatched the ball and a terrific mark taken by Holland. Yeah, he's got to stand up there, Owen. That's It looks good early. Hand pass away. Chance for the Tigers. Flying shot at goal as a Joe Barton. Couple of goals to Richmond. Joel Bowden, a flying shot from outside 50. Magnificent kick goal to the Tigers. Good work by Ben Holland again. He's playing centre forward very smartly, pushing back inside the 50 zone there and pushing forward to centre forward. You don't get a lot of space at Colonial. He's working very well up against Tim McGrath, one-on-one, -on -one, leading hard and strong, and that's what he needs to do. Give the support out. Broderick was smart inside the pack there. Flick the ball on, and a great contested mark by Ben Holland. Quick give, goal. So what a start by the Tigers. You kick the first couple, King got it down. But Geelong not able to escape with it. They haven't really gone forward at all yet. The Cats forward line have not really gone near it. And what the Tigers have done is they've pushed the half forwards up to the wing and the wingers up to the half back flank to give them more space in their forward line. There's only six in their 50 metre zone here. It's to crowd the Geelong forward line. Geelong have only gone inside 50 once. Richmond four times. Gale, Fed Pittis can play against his old team. Thumping kick, Holland again. He was behind. He might have given away a free to McGrath. They look very sharp, the Tigers. Yeah, they do. It's yeah, even the eyes then, too. Warning signs for the Cats. Clark gets penetration on the kick, but uh, a good lead out from Houlihan, who opens things up quickly. Then drives it in long. Stadium's at the back. Hands to it. Chaffee, well done Mooney, very well done, sets up a recovery goal. Good work there by Hullahan, a long strong kick to the top of the square there, put the pressure of the Richmond defenders on notice, and great work by Jason Mooney, desperation, he's known for that, Sydney Swans and Geelong recruited him last year, good desperation, quick hands out, and Riccardi, the money man, very rarely misses, good snapshot goal. So they need the one they catch, they looked a bit sluggish early out of the blocks where Richmond have been very good. Well, some good play by uh, players on the, each side there. Paul Broderick to set up a goal for Joel Bowden and then uh, Jason Mooney at ground level feeding it to Riccardi. Two goals to one. Early in the first term, Broderick a little hand to it. Steinford overruns it. Sanderson trying to clear that congestion. Unsuccessful, umpire will bounce. And Jason Tawney's got the big job on Ronnie Burns. There are the players that uh, Couchy referred to, Jason Tawney, the Tigers, Ronnie Burns, the excitement machine from uh, Geelong. Well, as Spriggs not able to get away from that uh, centre bounce. Burns looks like he's playing up. Yeah. Across half forward, Cats. He pushing just up to, a fair way. Well, just to get space. You know, on this ground, it's a very small ground, so you need to work space. Just rotating with all the hand from forward pocket up to forward line, half forward flank. Brendan Gale up against uh, Stephen King. Well, misunderstanding between King and Broderick. Broderick just hacked it forward. Bowden dispossessed. Scholl not able to control the football. He's harassed there by Daffy. He is the master of getting the ball out of bounds, Brad Scholl. <laughs> he is the absolute master. Oh, the ball was very slippery, Hutto. Yeah. <laughs> it is, because of course the, the dew caused by the roof being closed. 
12 playing six. Thrown in. McGrath did pretty well. Spriggs has found it tough to get clear so far. There's a free kick. And I think he's going to take it. Either he or Clark. Danny Frawley no, referred to the fact that he wanted the players to be uh, desperate with their attack on the football and the man. And they're doing just that, the Tigers, early. Moody, the target, had a couple to beat. Couldn't do so. Gaspar is always solid across half back. This is Chappie now. Going long to half forward. Like a Great defensive punch away from Ottens by Graham. Well gathered by Burke. He was going backwards looking for support. Found it in Chappie. Quick kick to centre half forward. And oh, Ottens. great mark. Great progress. He can't so get up quick enough. The though. marking forwards of the Tigers are certainly putting a lot of pressure on the Geelong defenders. Ottens and Hollands kicked it. Why, does, why wouldn't he have a shot here now? He's got to steady down and just bang yeah, it through, doesn't he, from 50? He will. Well, that was a, a great mark and really showed what everyone's talking about with Brad Ottens. He is such a, an outstanding prospect. He's yet to really consistently yes. play well at the top level. But you just saw in there that the, the raw talent he's got as far as marking is concerned. Let's check out his kicking ability from just outside 50. He's kicked, I think, 13 goals this year. Now it's 14. Great kick from Ottens and a fantastic start by the Tigers. Accurate kicking all round. And Richmond lead by 12 points. And the marking players up forward for Richmond are, are troubling the Geelong defenders there. Harley, just a little bit smaller than Ottens, so it's a good mark by Ottens. And Ben Holland's been very lively at centre-half forward. So those players have combined well. Put a lot of pressure on the... Geelong defenders, Ben Graham, who's marking Ottens, was, wasn't anywhere near him. He's got to play a little bit tighter. And the Cats around the midfield have got to put a little bit more, more pressure, pressure on, on the players, yeah. keeping the ball forward. Well, at this stage of the game, Gary Hocking has had his hands on the ball only once, and uh, that is very, very unusual. Duncan Calloway trying to get it clear. There's Gary Hocking going in after the ball with Bitterscombe. The umpire will bounce once again. Richmond have kicked three goals. Geelong have kicked one. Riccardi for the Cats. Ottens, Bowden and Callaway. Andrew Callaway for Richmond. Bounce of the ball just forward of the centre circle. Favouring the Tigers. Brendan Gale doing the ruck work. Ball comes out from Riccardi. Matthew Knight's good physical pressure there. Gives the hand pass back. Gasper. In turn Tawny. Wider still, this is a good build-up. Gathered here by Fiora. He's able to get past. One little touch on the ground. Back to Tawny. He's gone. Should have been penalised. Umpire called play on. That probably advantage to Tigers. But Riccardi did well. Gathered the ball and then kicked with the right. Out very wide. Chance there for Houlihan. His kick. Well, was that a free kick? It's deemed as such and it'll go to Bizzle. Pretty soft. Bizzle from 50 metres. Thumping kick by Bizzle will go all the way. No, touch right on the line by the Tigers defence and a behind kick by Clint Bizzle for Geelong. It all started with Aaron Fiora's indecision there. He should, just got it and kicked it long to Holland and Ottens. They've done the job up there. Indecision and a turnover and Geelong get a chance to score. Richmond looked pretty good early. Signs are excellent. Obviously on the scoreboard they're in front, but they've been building well across half back. And they might again. Gale brought it to ground. Now Broderick. And they're through the middle. Hilton from the centre circle. Going along in the Ottens direction. Oh. Almost took it. No free kick. The Tiger fans wanted it. Corrigan will get Shoal. And then he's got a, a short option. And he went down the middle. He decided to go along. He's still got the inboard option in Scarlet. But he decides to kick a tough one under the wing. For Stoner and the ball out of bounds. Two against one. Wrong decision by Charlie. Should have looked in board to Raleigh. He was there on his own and missed him. Worked the ball through the centre of the ground. Do you think Bob Thompson would be a bit concerned at this stage? Well, they look very low. Look, Richmond were very good last week, so they have his concerns before the week, Hutto. They were very good and hard at the ball against Carlton last week. It was only one bad decision by Clinton King that really cost him his kick into the centre half forward to Bradley and Camparelli, and they scored a goal, and the momentum swung. Carlton's way. So they're competitive last week. Mark Thompson would have his worries. Stoneham, no one really going with him. Did well to feed it out to Scholl. Did very well. And Scholl cleared the pathway. Bizzle had it knocked away by Hilton. Knights has looked good early. That's a very attacking thing to do from half back, isn't it? 
slap it inboard like that. <laughs> Callaway cleared it onto the wing. Gale in front was the tallest man in that contest. Didn't take it. Free kick to Callaway for in the back. Brendan Gale was good there, backing back and just making a contest. Yeah, making it. Well, the tools have been very good early, Robbo. Bitterskin kicks in towards half forward. Now, this is where a couple of the Tiger midfielders, smaller players, have got to get to the base of the pack. If their big men are going to be thwarted by the Geelong defence, they gather the ball and will clear, as they did there in the case of Ben Graham. Got to play him quickly. You can't play a static with the Richmond players push back into Geelong's forward line there. Bizzle out wide. Gary Hawkins kick into the pocket. Riccardi, Chaffee. The bounce was terrific from Mark Chaffee. Gathered, and then with the left, kicks back to the wing. Hilton and Gary Hockey, look at him work. He can't get the ball out, and he's going to be penalised. <laughs> Gee, I know that's a, uh, that's a hard rule, but he's a It's a rule, player. and they don't protest much, but you could see his endeavours were there, and the Richmond player, his endeavours yeah. to try and keep it in. He just fell over. Well, I and guess you'd give credit to Rory Hilton for playing it well. Callaway to Bitterskin. And the Tigers away again and looking dangerous. Bowden. Oh, oh yes. Stood up. There's, there's a problem. There's no, yeah, there's a problem. He's, he's one of the best young talents in the caper. It's very good, but his height's worrying and his reach for the ball. He marked the ball at his highest point here. You can see long, straight arms. That's what you need to do, the highest point. I he's think worried, Graham. with Ben Graham, he's used to having the height advantage, isn't he, yes. on, on most opponents. And he's good lead too, Upton, so he'll upset... Benny Graham's balance there. Should have pushed back probably a little bit harder, misjudged the ball through the air. Pushed back harder. He had front position. So Brad Ottens has already taken two marks today and kicked a goal. And this would give the Tigers a real fill-up early in this game. Out of the second half of the first quarter only, but going for four straight goals. Oh, it's disappointing. You've got to make those chances. Half chances. He's not a multiple goal scorer. Otten, so you've got to make every possible opportunity when you get a shot from 35 out. You've got to hit him. To... That's disappointing. Couchy, two of the lesser lights in the Richmond lineup. Uh, Mark Chaffee, five kicks and one hand pass. And Craig Bittersport, five kicks. They were good last week. Up in the top five possessions for Richmond last week. They were very good at the half back line. How, how good's this kick? It's gone 60 metres and immediately puts the midfield of Richmond under pressure. Kick forward by Steinford, but the Tigers across their half-back line are standing up grandly. Duncan Calloway goes out wide. Roderick has been a fantastic player of Australian football. He's got the ball on centre wing and just drops it onto the lap of King, who dropped the sitter. And I'd say Tom Harley would have let him know all about it too. Well, he did, but he, he's made a couple of errors. Missed a couple of marks, Clinton King, so... Confidence down a little bit. There's two marks he should have taken. It's a about second one there. We're nearly in the same spot. It was too, yeah, very much the same area, about 60 metres from the Richmond goal. Holland gets it down, Tawny can't break the tackle, got his right boot to it, into very much the danger zone as far as Geelong are concerned. Ben Graham gets his left foot to it, bounces awkwardly. Oh, terrific oh, gather, work. wonderful gather, not able to break away though. So you give credit to the tackler and the player That's with the ball. Work. The tackler was Bittescom, and there's another good contest between uh, Nick Daffy and his immediate opponent, who uh, it might be Carl Steinford. It's just standing there in the Richmond forward line there. Tawny is fantastic putting pressure on Ben Graham and the Matthew Knights with a smother. Just they're tackling and harassing Richmond have been very, very good early. Gee, they're up the Tigers. Don't worry about that. <laughs> they are really up and about. Riccardi feeding Scholl. Under Ooh, pressure. He yeah. was under a lot of pressure. King likewise, the smothering, the tackling. Fantastic by Richmond. Chaffee going go. for Rogers. <laughs> Loose man over the top. Handball missed the target. Oh. Graham overran it. Still a chance. Now they'll score a goal. Oh no! They've... Oh dear. Comedy just, of errors there. But you see, Ben Graham missed the ball. Just the pressure of the Richmond players, making him think about what's around him here. He's completely missed it here. And Tawny was good work before on Graham again. Well, Graham taking the short option this time. Went for McGrath, who kicks it to Clark. And Geelong are away to half forward. Clark's kick lands the ball at half forward. Good punch by Hilton. Terrific punch by King. Puts the pressure right back on the Tigers. Ronnie Burns. Oh, no! Oh, it spills. Gaspar. Not bad umpiring in those circumstances. Gaspar's kick is a beauty. One of the chest of Bowden. Has he improved his kicking? A beautiful long kick of the football, Joel Bowden. And he runs through the line. Spectacular footy. Goes out wide. And the mark is taken by Gale. 
Good lead. Tigers, Good very lead. much. I tell you what, their supporters wouldn't mind this sort of football if they could put it together for four quarters. Ben Holland, Matthew Knights, wide to Broderick, he'll kick a goal. Paul oh, Broderick will kick a goal. A bit too easy. And all like those Geelong Geelong fans that have come are enjoying this. It looked like the Geelong players stopped here. They thought they were going to get a free, I think, to Tim McGrath. Yeah, no, it wasn't a free kick. He used his strength on him. Yeah. What you're allowed to do. Haven't, haven't their half-back line been, been brilliant, been. though? For the tools have been very good. Brendan Gale and Ottens, ha Holland have been very, very good. Stronger the contest, the marking contest, making space for the smaller players here. Knights was very good. And Broderick's had four kicks and one amble's been very good. So what will Geelong do in return at the moment? They need to quell the Tigers. Knights feeding them again. A beautiful kick. It just didn't quite make it to Gale on the full. Well done by Graham to dispossess. Wheeled it with a bouncing one onto the wing. Steinfurt well tackled and caught. Should have been pinned. Surely yeah, he work. didn't. They deserve it. They're doing all the hard work. They're attacking the man and the ball. But they're tackling and chasing the Tigers. In the end, it was a high tackle pay to Knights. Well, you get everything. If you're going hard at the ball and deserve it, that's under pressure. That was a beautiful tackle. Nice three kicks, two hand balls. This is coming up in sixth position. Sets it up. Wasn't a good kick that time. Cats with numbers across half back. Sanderson, again, just a little inaccurate with the handball. Under pressure, McGrath gets it out wide into King. Got to keep it moving. Does that now. O'Brien off the bench and on the ground. Takes on Ottens and can go try and get it over the half forward line but couldn't really the numbers were with the Tigers no free kick but Hilton takes it away and finds the boundary line what a great start by Richmond four minutes to go in the first quarter 4-2 to 1-1 talk but about players not getting credit does that fella come into that category Hilton I reckon he's a terrific little yeah, player he's a good player just injuries last year Robbo just struggled a bit but now he's playing a lot better a bit quiet last week but he's had a good year Chaffee, who kicks the ball pretty well. Well, he's been good. He must have said, I reckon Frawley said, just leave him on the half-back flank and just let him play footy. Nine possessions he's had. Daffy yeah. receives from Holland. Pretty good kick. Yeah, Bowden has Bowden covered some territory in this match so far? He was very good last week too. But Chaffee off the half-back flank there, I think Danny Frawley said, just, I'm going to play in the half-back flank, get some confidence, play some time. And same with Bitterscombe. He's been very good. And Bowden's been sensational too. Very good last week. Joel Bowden, so seven the, possessions, going for his second goal. The on ballers of Geelong are actually they're getting slaughtered. They are, aren't they? Around the middle, and as Hutto said, that half-back line of Richmond rebounding beautifully. We're watching Bowden. Point-blank range, and he kicks the goal. So it's all Richmond. Their first quarter so far has meant 5-2 to 1-1 and they lead by 25 points. Yeah, Bowden, Broderick, Knights have been very good. Otten's has chipped in. And we spoke about Bitterscombe being very good. Chaffee's been good off the half-back flank. He was very good last week. But just their tackling and chasing have been very good today, Richmond. And they deserve the lead. 5-2, 32, 1-1-7, Richmond, uh, Geelong. They certainly deserve the lead. Geelong have made a few changes. Uh, Mitch is on the ground. O'Brien, as you can see in the middle there. They get it out, but not really out of the uh, centre equation. Well, that's not a great kick from Hilton. It goes very, very wide. First to it is Chappie. Gave it up, gave it backwards. Good tackle, or was it in the back? Nothing, said the umpire. Let it all go. Hocking, gee, oh, just tackle. gang tackle. Fierce stuff by the Tigers. Well done, oh, Bizzle. Work, Bizzle. Terrific tackle and a throw call. So Bizzle rewarded for his tackling. Fantastic tackling by the Tigers. So Duncan Calloway showing the way. Leadership, hard tackling. It goes for centre half forward. Shoal could have perhaps run on, but he thinks he's within range. And what? he's going to have a shot for goal. What's a good number of tackles for a game in total? Well, 40? Oh, you'd have to say 30, 35. Well, they've had eight and nine each so yeah. far in the first quarter. That's about getting up towards a 35 tackles yeah. a game. Sensational game, just a pressure. But that's what's going to happen, Clone this time. It's a very tight ground. Well, Scholl's kick is not a good one. You're going to get that sort of tackling because of the ground being a lot smaller, Robert. There's not enough space there. 
And you saw one instance there was 20 players around the ball. So the Cats in real trouble here. It's only early, but Richmond with just two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter certainly deserve their four goal lead. 14 times inside their forward 50 to the Tigers. Six to Geelong. Kick in. Didn't quite work. Gary Hocking on this occasion gets it clear to Steinford. Steinford's handball knocked away by Chaffee. Dispossessed was Steinford again. Good tackling. Oh, that's a free kick. That's certainly a free kick again, Tilton. And it'll go to Minch. Should have went for the tackle, not the body. Kicks the ball into half court. He might have coughed it up. Riccardi couldn't take the mark, but well done by Fiora. Fiora's kick goes out very wide. Attempted mark there by Ben Holland. He fell over. Tim McGrath did well. Gathered by Lynch. Lynch, that's Tristan Lynch. Paul Lynch not playing. The kick in towards half court was good centering. And Bizzle judged on a kick that he had here. Uh, who was that against? When he bombed it from the middle of Kangas. the ground. Kangas. Yep. Well, you'd say Bizzle, this is a stab pass for him, isn't it? Well... It was a good clean mark too, wasn't it? Was. it? He hit it clean the last time. I don't know whether he can hit it so clean this time, Robbo. Just see, wait and see. Well, he's from 50. Don't worry about the distance. Right to the wire. It's a bit out of kick for 50. Just off to the right. The average is uh, you're, you're going to miss more than you get. Well, Colonial Stadium is certainly alive today. The noise is fantastic. I'd say we'd probably have around 30,000 plus, maybe even the mid 30s. And they're making a noise, the Tiger fans. King will oh! This is crashing over again. Good work off the ball by Tristan Lynch. Allowing the path through. Scholl taking it. Oh, what's he doing? He's going back to the Richmond goals. Doing? <laughs> like the Leyland brothers of old there. Into the pocket. Houlihan out by Bowden. BOG so far. Yeah. He's so damaging too. Although he's he might have got himself into trouble. No, he kept his head. Although oh. his kick wasn't good. Riccardi will see it out, 45 seconds remaining in the quarter. And that's what they'll do, the Tigers, they'll cough it up and turn it over sometimes. They did that against Carlton last week. They just haven't got the quality of the polish yet, but they're improving all the time. Ten possessions to uh, Bowden, a couple of goals, and that's his 11th possession that has cleared that uh, ruck contest. 32 plays nine, Richmond by 23 points. Cats yeah. must be shell-shocked at the moment. Well, well, this they is, they this could is have the expected area. it a bit though. Richmond were very, very good last week and I'm not surprised the score at this stage. Well, there's only seconds left, but they've got to concentrate all the way through till the siren That's sounds right. to end uh, the first term. Bowden again. Broderick goes back to Bowden, but Tivendale chips in, gets back onto his favourite left side, delivers into the middle, gathered by Bitterscombe. They've got seconds left. They've got to take a mark, but it goes to the Cats. Sanderson oh, forced Manic. to play on. Back into the middle of the ground. Steinford, good gather. Head pass to no one in particular. Brilliantly gathered by Tivendale. Kicks it forward. Sanderson under pressure. There's four cats to one tiger. Ben Graham goes wide. Laterally there to Bradshaw. Into the middle, puffs it up. But the siren has sounded as Tivendale got into the action. The end of that first term, which saw Richmond pretty well dominate. 5-2 to 1-3. The scoreboard indicates that and so will the quarter time stats. Your thoughts, Couchy? Well, just the tackling and chasing of Richmond. You just saw that last play there where Charlie's coughed it up and he's generally a very good kick. It's just their pressure inside the forward 50. That's where they really need the pressure there because they've been lacking in the last couple of weeks. Ottens has been very good. Ben Holland started the game off, but Joel Bowden's been sensational. Just on the ball, the Cats are just lacking there. Buddha Hocking hasn't had a lot of the ball. They're going to miss Kilpatrick. Knights has been very good up against Steinford. But just overall, all over the ground, bit of scone was good. Chaffee playing off the half-back flank. Look, they've been good all over the ground, the boys. And Gasper's been very good also. Well, the Cats under fire. The Tigers in front at quarter time. 5-2, 32 to 139. Back shortly. What a quarter by Richmond. Really firing out. Joel Bowden, brilliant off half back and through the midfield. Two goals, Ottens, Broderick, Callaway and Riccardi. A lone stand for the catch. The Tigers in front by just under four goals. Well, Danny Frawley would obviously be delighted with the performance of his charges. Robbo, what do you think that Geelong need to do? 
Oh, well, I think that around the middle of the ground, they just haven't been able to get their hands on the ball. It's been very hot, and uh, I think that's the the uh, what Danny Frawley was alluding to in his interview with Paul before the game, that uh, no matter who you put out there, if you put 18 guys out there that are very, very committed to make sure that the opposition don't get an easy touch of the ball, and that's exactly what's happening with the Richmond players couching. And they're running well off half-back flank there. They put the wings up the half-back, the half-forwards up to the wing. So they're pushing all the players into the Geelong forward line there, just crowding their forward line up, not giving them a lot of space. And they're just running off well. Bowden, Chaffee, a bit of scam have been very good. Callaway's done a good job on Gary Hocking. Gary Hocking's only had two kicks, so that's a, gr a great reward for Duncan Callaway. He's been really hard at it. He's tackling, making Buddha think about his possession because when he tackles hard, You've got to make the bloke think, and that's what he's doing. That's what all the Richmond players are doing. They're making them think. Chaffee's... Peter Riccardi's gone on Joel Bowden, who's been absolutely sensational. So that's a move there where Mark Thompson think they can swing it around and get some good work off Peter Riccardi. He's been very quiet. He's only had two kicks and three handballs. soul has gone into the midfield too for Geelong. So Mark Thompson making a few structural changes. But Gale and King are at the opening bounce, and they're at it again as we start the second quarter. King probably got the better of the tap. Callaway was eventually dragged down. Clark came through, didn't take the ball with him. Clark's been quiet. Burns gets it to Scholl. Quick kick. Mensch, not much in support. Had to go backwards to find Hocking, and that was ineffectual, as you saw. And Burke takes them on, ran a long way, but just got a bounce down in time. Ran himself into trouble. And then gets out of it by handballing and putting Bittescombe under pressure. They maintain possession, though. King a hurry kick to half forward. Rogers almost. Tristan Lynch got it back, Harley's kick, another smother, their smothering has just been amazing. Broderick, this is Ben Holland now, out wide, young Fiora, Shows he me. goes down with a head down, is he going to get a free? No, said the umpire, Bittescombe, Geelong improving their pressure but not really able to tackle effectively so far in this quarter. Now That's a goal chance coming up for the Tigers, and Rogers puts it through. And that's not good news for the Cats. Looks like a hamstring for Ronnie Burns. And Rogers, who is a goal kicker for the Tigers, he's kicked, I think, 14 for the year, has put it through. Yeah, he's done his hamstring. And yeah, there it is. good news for Geelong because his pace around the forward line is very, very handy. Really upsets the balance of the Richmond back line. Derek Hall will probably come on for him. I know it's James Raleigh who's coming on for him. But it's good work by Ottens. He was a man that tapped it straight to to Rogers, sensational play. So things not going well for the Cats, it's fair to say. At the start of this quarter, Burns is a huge loss for them. And more important, more immediate matters, the Tigers are just dominating. Bittescombe, again it was Bowden that got them set up. Good distance on the kick, was that a show? No, it wasn't. And Ben Graham has paid the mark. Daffy got quite close to him there. Burns in a fair bit of pain. It looks like a bad tear. And they've been good to long this year with no injuries. Their rehab's been very good, but bad blow. Burns injured. Well, it wasn't oh, much there for Geelong. He's on the front and he is caught. And probably should have been penalised. Really, that's poor umpiring in that situation. Raleigh did well. Now Spriggs, can he do something with it? He's going for the goal square. Well, he's going to need a very tight yeah. bounce. What, that kid did very well then. He summed that up beautifully. You could see the players moving down the ground. The goal was unattended, so he backed himself. Maybe he's a little fortunate, but he did very well. It was very tight, tight here. In and under was Raleigh. It was very good. Summed up his options very well. It was a one-on-one -on -one contest about 20 metres away. Went long. You need a bit of luck in footy. You got that. And goal. David Spriggs, the goal kicker for Geelong. A goal each in the early part of the second term and uh, you would think that Ronnie Burns won't take any further part in this match. He might be out for a couple of weeks because he was uh, very much helped off the ground. Gaspar a bit stiff a moment ago when he was oh. called the player. Callaway was tackled well. Chaffee gathers and then kicks across the middle of the ground. Gathered here by Bittescombe. Boy, he's had a fair bit of the football, hasn't he? Craig Bittescombe, nine possessions. Kicks towards full forward. There's another goal to uh, the Tigers. Nick Daffy doesn't miss these. He does this time. He's hit the post. 
and the Tigers are playing long and direct to Ottens. They've got a tall there. They can go to him and they're working off him beautifully. Rogers with one. Daffy missed the opportunity there. Usually kicks him. Cats have got to kick a couple of goals. A couple of unanswered goals, you would think. Each time they go forward, Richmond seem to have uh, the uh, chance to come back and uh, answer on the scoreboard. Raleigh, receiving from Mench, kicks it forward. Very good contest provided by Mooney. Knights as well tackled. Ball spills for Gary Hocking. He gets it out wide to Minch. Minch's left foot kick is a bit of an up and under. Has that been oh, paid to Bizzle? No, it's a free no, kick. Free kick. kick. Uh, can't see that. He positioned himself beautifully, Stephen King there, and Brendan Gale's got the free kick. Out wide to Hilton. Hilton shrugs the tackle. Handball's back towards the goal square. Brendan Gale goes long, pops it up. Brad Child is there, marked safely on his chest. Good pressure by Gary Hocking. Brought that mistake on. Now the kick should go to the uh, probably the front of the goals, but it goes Bizzle. in the direction of Bizzle. Couldn't take it. Gets the hand pass out, but uh, chopped off by Knights. Goes back. Bitterscombe again. A high kick. High flyer was Duncan Calloway. Gathers to Knights. Knights in the middle of the ground. Assesses. Kicks across the half forward line. Gathered by Daffy. Back onto his right. Nick Daffy into the pocket. Pretty good kick. Beautifully weighted for Ottens. Running as Rogers, but Ottens would do well to steady and maybe have a shot at goal. It's been very lovely, Ottens. It's been very good. He's worried Benny Graham with his height, he's leading. Still a little bit of indecision. But now he goes back and thumps it. No, it's long and beautifully for a goal. Another one of the times. Good work off their back line again. Knights is very good. Bit of scum. Daffy joined in there. Beautiful kick. And Ottens is worried Ben Graham. I've never seen Ben Graham worried out of a game like this. Ottens with his height. He's poised in a tight situation. Just to tap the ball onto Rogers. I'd give him that goal. It's two goals he's been attributed to this quarter. And a great set shot here. Bang, straight through the middle. One of Richmond's greats, Dale Wakeman, is the runner. I'll give him one message now. Go out there and tell that bloke, if you get it within 50 metres, you're going to have a shot at goal. What a magnificent kick. So, 30 points the margin. And the Tigers continuing on. No clear possession in the middle. Chaffee, he lost it too. Spriggs likewise. Yeah, it's tough in there. And hard to get a clean possession. You try and open it up. Give yourself free some space. Free kick to Richmond. John Harvey has picked something out. What a must have slipped. Indiscriminate free kick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to playing with him. Spoke a lot of true well low middle is catchy. Sets it up. Uh, Sanderson's in front and helped out that time. Oh, Corrigan got the kick away and he found the boundary line. It was quite a good kick. He's been good, Corrigan. Nick Duffy's only had three kicks, two hand balls, but he's been very good. But he can keep the pressure on. Roddy Burns, misery looking all over his face after this incident. And bang, I reckon he's done it pretty badly. Right in the middle. Well, play goes on, but not much happening. Free kick. It's a long free, and the fans applauding, as if to say we haven't had too many, the Cats fans saying. Mooney the target, but not really looking like taking that. Was that in the back? No, held to him, said the umpire. It was good work by Mooney to push Tristan Lynch onto the ball then. <laughs> Shoved him on the... So that's a plan, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a plan. That that's goes a game. on the that's chalkboard team, before yeah, the game? Number, number 33, that one. <laughs> Geelong have had six free kicks and Richmond five. Mooney got up early. Hockey. Charging through Hocking. Didn't Goal really ball, knock it good. out. It's rugby union stuff there. It's just saying to put it, just watch your elbows. Yeah, in the pack there, go the free kick away. Tim McGrath behind, uh, no, it's Brad Scholl trying to pretend he's an aeroplane or something in there, waving his arms around. Might be a blood rule here, David, David Clark, Clark coming off. Danny O'Brien will come onto the ground. I think uh, when you look at Geelong's performances in the first eight matches, they've kicked uh, 857 points four. Averaged out at about, uh, what, 140 would that be? In uh, 130 in seven games. And they've only kicked two goals and we're well into the second term. 
King's doing the ruck work against Gale, and Gale's been terrific so far. That's got to be a free kick to Callaway. The umpire probably so. blinded by it. Spriggs couldn't get through. Gale over the top. Still over the top. And that's where Glenn Kilpatrick's very important too, Robbo. He gets yeah, a ball been, forward, yeah. impacts situations. He just gets it on quickly. Foot has been a little bit down. Peter Riccardi hasn't had a lot of the ball. I'd like to see Rico on the ball. So we'll go again with Gale and King. Gale, got the tap. Broderick couldn't get clear. Sanderson wrapped up. And again, another ball up. Actually, to back up what you said about Glenn Kilpatrick, he was dominant in the midfield and across half forward last week. He had 19 effective disposals. Five hard ball and five loose ball. Yeah, he gets. just gets it and he's very hard in and under. Callaway with a blood rule. Well, that'll well, be a welcome relief for Gary Hockey. Well, I think that's that's what's happened here with David Clark and now Duncan Callaway. The in and unders have been terrific and uh, Richmond coming out on top in that area so far. Well, you can't play footy without getting a bruise, brother, in this day and age. You've got to be hard at it all the time. If you, if you play without a bruise, you're not trying. Young Ezra Poyas, number 26, coming onto the ground. So let's see if they can break up the passage of play here. We've had a lot of packs around the ball. King kicked it off the ground. Fiora beaten for it. King feeding the ball back. Sanderson just closed his eyes. To, not closed his eyes, but he might as well have. He just kicked it blindly over the top. Hocking. Houlihan. Bizzle. No sure hand. Spriggs was quick, but went nowhere. Gale just opens it up. Daffy, was he being held on to? No. He fights for it. He didn't get an effective handball. O'Brien was held it out. Free kick, advantage taken by Riley. Geelong, big chance for a goal here. Hurlihan, will it sit for him? Yes. Good long and direct kick. Hey, James Riley, very good. Good pressure in the midfield there by the Geelong players there. They've been working hard. They've got the rewards needed there. But Hurlihan judged the ball beautifully. Knew it was going over the back. Minch and Callaway were going at the ball, well read. It was a two-on-one situation, and Hillhand made the most of his opportunities. He was a free kick against the Tigers there. O'Brien got it, but the quick play on, that's what they didn't do in the first quarter. Didn't play on quick enough, Geelong. It's good work, and Hillhand read the ball better. A football red hot still around the middle of the Ooh. ground. Yes, it's a bit dangerous. 7-3 plays 3-3. It's a four-goal margin, but there really is not that much difference between these two teams. Richmond coming out on top in the slip contest around the middle of the ground. Andrew Callaway's hand pass to David Burke just had a little bit too much on it. Back goes Andrew Callaway, gets a left foot to it, gathered by Bitterskin, gives away a little bit of ground. Back to Andrew Callaway, in towards the centre-half back position, and Broderick is marked. Second selection, not bad, to King, in turn to Poyas. Poyas goes into the middle, Bowden, Ben Holland. Transference of play there, Chaffee, right foot kick in towards football. Oh, Mark Harley. He beat Tunnel, he should have been because he did a wonderful job there to stand his ground. Too tough for me, I would have, said, I would have left out of that contest. <laughs> it's pretty good. Riccardi marks at left half back for Geelong. I reckon you would have too, Cass. <laughs> Only <would've> joking. <laughs> up, to, <laughs> up to half. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> My father always said heroes die, brave soldiers survive. <laughs> oh, great tough work there. Knew he was in danger. Back, back. Great work, Tom Harley. So, important stage of this quarter. Was Gale manhandled yeah, there? Freaking. Just with the Tigers, they just over the use the ball in the midfield there, probably giving one extra handball where they didn't have to, and got to get the ball quickly down to Holland. Too slow. Well, he goes in that direction now. That's McGrath better. in front, Holland yeah. takes the mark. He's had the better of the one-on-one -on -one contest with Tim McGrath, so you've got to get it to him. He's in good form. Well, Holland's a big kick. He sets it up oh, instead. Yes. Pretty good kick. Graham spoiled. Oh. No free. Corrigan got rid of Rogers. Pressure. Good work. Still on. Good work, and the feed was good. Chaffee off the left, into the square. Cardi was in front. Yeah, Tom Cardi's bowled them all out of bounds. It's Tippendale over there yeah, for the Tigers. great work. It was good work by Peter Riccardi. He was under pressure there. He had to sit on him, bowed, and he held his ground. Right forward pocket here for Geelong. Danny Frawley off to the right. Darren Crocker and uh, the injured Wayne Campbell. 
Tivendale, can he be rewarded? A flying shot at goal by Greg Tivendale. He's put it through for the Tides. Good work. He is a very clever player. Very efficient off the left boot. And he's got his just rewards. He's worked pretty hard since coming off the interchange bench. Really was Greg good. Tivendale with his fifth possession has kicked his first goal. Really was good work. And this is where the Tigers have been very da dangerous in the boundary throw-ins. Their height's worried the Geelong defenders there. Good work by Ottens again. He's been very good. Holland's been good. Smart tap on Tivendale. Didn't let him down. Goal. Yes, 30 points the margin. The Cats unable to really get back into this at this stage. Richmond Tawny got right. them going. This man has carved them up. He took them on bound and then his handball was a bit hit and hope stuff. Holland's been presenting himself pretty well. Riccardi overran it. Daffy couldn't get clear. McGrath holds it up. And they really are warriors out there at the moment. It's pretty tough stuff. Well, winners are grinners, eh? Richmond have been better in, in the in tight situation there. I'd like to see the Cats just take themselves away from the pack there and get more space to work in. Holland tried to dish it off to a teammate. Couldn't do so. That was hopeful from Corrigan. Dragosevic went to ground numbers with Richmond. Callaway, hurry kick. Harley against Rogers. Harley did pretty well. Found it hard to get it off, though. He had to go in again. And the ball up the result. The pressure being applied at both ends, really, well, all over the ground by both teams, but particularly by Richmond. And their forwards, when the ball's in attack, is just tremendous. They're rather innovative, the medical staff these days, can't you, aren't they? Not a good look, but it stops them from bleeding. Or work? Well done. Hocking will take it towards the boundary line. Out the full. And the free kick. Going meant, to Hocking. He meant to do that too, that was a smart play. He kicked it into his yeah, foot. Yeah. And the feed on the way out, I'll tell you what, it was outstanding accuracy if he did. Harley can get to long onto the wing. Callaway almost took the mark. Houlihan's feed was pretty good. Quick kick. Oh, touched off the boot. Bettiscom. Good tackle. Well wrapped up. And good following on by Houlihan. Feeding it across to Scholl, who's got not a lot to work with. Goes short and King takes the juggler. Go back, go take it on. Well, he kicked it very quickly. I don't know if that was the right option. Mitch. Oh, no free kick. Isn't that in the back? No free kick. G Knights just scooped it out and got them away. Gaspar can kick it under the wing where Hilton is lurking. Spritz does a pretty good job to provide the ball. Oh, quick buzzer. Really good stuff there by Stoneham. Riley, Spritz, well done, Gregor Kept chasing and the kick fell short, and that's an important chase provided by Mark Dragasevic. Gasper takes the mark, kicks across the line. Andrew Callaway out towards left half back where Bowden has gathered the ball, gets past his opponent. One bounce, second bounce, forced a hand pass now. A little too fierce there for Chaffee, but he's able to gather the ball and then kick it in the pocket. Punched away there by Stoneham. Gathered by the Tigers again, forced forward. Contest in the left forward pocket between Graham and Ottens. Ottens tries to keep it alive, unsuccessful. And it will be thrown in left forward pocket for Richmond. I spoke about it before, just their over finessing in the midfield there. Get it long and direct to Holden has been very good. I know that the forward of Geelong players are pushing down there, their wingers are pushing down into the Richmond forward line there, but you've got to get it down there quickly. Roderick having a rest and uh, being attended to by the training staff. He's had a good game. He's a veteran now, Paul Broderick, and uh, the Tides would be looking after his body because he was pretty good in that first quarter. The smaller ground suits him too, Robbo. The bigger grounds, dry grounds. But here the ball's a little bit beat, a little bit slippery. Smaller ground, he's been very good. Four kicks, seven handballs. Well, Stoneham in the ruck against Ottens. On this occasion, Ottens, no doubt, Daffy wanted a free. Gets it out to King. Another step on goal! Geelong 3-3 as Clinton King kicks his first. Well, he hasn't had a lot of the ball, Hutto. He's had three kicks, one handball and a goal there. But Ottens again with his good ruck work, intelligent stuff there. Flipped it to the Richmond players there. Daffy got it out. Good hard work in and under. That's where they've been very good, Richmond, today. 
clearances from stoppages on play would be very high from Richmond today. Good, good, good. Yeah, he worked and worked yes. and worked and you know he could see on a couple of occasions he wasn't going to get the ball out Got but it. he just kept persevering didn't he? It's good work. And Clinton King a couple of fumbles early and he hit back with a great goal there. The uh, lesser known and uh, lesser recognised players continue to dominate this game for Richmond. Chaffee and Bitterscombe both have had 13 possessions. Tawny, drag down, got the kick away. Dragasevic to Bitterscombe and Bitterscombe joins the goal kicking spree for the Tigers. But by G, when they're going all right, they're they're here in force. Well, thanks for that, Robbo. And they're going for it. <laughs> Look, Craig Bittersham, he'd, he'd enjoy that because he was at Geelong. He's had 11 kicks, three handballs. He's been very good off the halfback line, line as he was last week, and a great goal. Another snap for him. And didn't he enjoy that? 42 points. 14 possessions to Bittersham and 14 possessions to Chaffee. So, still six minutes for Richmond to do more damage, or for Geelong to try and get something on the board. Riccardi feeding Steinford, and that's a good kick and a good mark in the end taken by Mitch. He, Peter Riccardi's gone on the ball now, Hutto. Just a good move, and he follows up. He's still too far out to score. He, he had a short option on, but decided to be a bit more central with his kicking. He's put it up to the top of the square. Not much. Oh, Steinford did well. Did well, and there was some question could have been asked whether there was any interference there at the top of the square, but Stoneham did well. And that's what they've lacked Geelong today, is a marking forward. Yep. You look down the other end, Holland, Ottens have done very well, but Geelong haven't had a contested mark in their forward line, I don't believe, for Hutto today. Uh, Stoneham kicks the goal. Cuts the margin back to six goals. Do you think Ben Graham might go forward at some stage? Well, it's probably not a bad option put Tim McGrath back on Ottens, but Ottens is high to worry them. Yep. You know, you could use Ben Graham at full forward just to make it long direct, get a contested mark there. Barry Stone and go into the ruck, just swap it around a bit. And even put Stephen King down there. You could swap that and put Stephen King down, Barry Stone onto the ruck or David Mench. So they can rotate a few options there, Geelong. The forlorn look on uh, the face of Ronnie Burns' hamstring injury has uh, cut him down. And it looked like a fairly severe hamstring injury. Richmond by six goals. Geelong go forward again. Important possession at the centre bounce by Riccardi. What a terrific grab. Soft hands by David Minch. And if he kicks a goal here, well, Geelong will have something to cheer about. They trail at the moment by six. Mitch to try and bring it back to five goals. Important player, David Mitch. Good kick too. Yeah. Wasn't it well controlled? Goal to Mitch. Geelong have kicked their fifth, their fourth for the quarter. Richmond have kicked five for the term, Tigers by five goals. This is where Richmond can't let the game fall apart here. Got five goals in front here, but Peter Riccardi, the move into the, into the square there, he's been involved in the last two goals. Very smart player, Peter Riccardi. Got the ball on quickly off his boot. Mitch read the ball beautifully and goal. Well, Stephen King has been winning in the hitouts through the day. And it's a matter of effectively finding your midfielder. So the Cats have kicked the last couple. Richmond this time out of the middle, and they'll have a chance to go forward here. Jagosevic kicked it quickly. It was all right, though. Tivendale, kick was smothered. Spriggs, very good with the away handball. Riccardi, got lots of space in front of him. Can go all the way, and no one to draw it to. Goes short, and gets Raleigh, who's within range, and will kick from almost identically. And Peter Riccardi evolved to Melton again. Yep. Three dimes now for three goals if they get this from Raleigh. Been very, very good. 
Rico in the last five minutes. It was the interception of Tivendale's kick though, wasn't it? Bouncing back and uh, eventually Geelong advantaged by that and it finishes with an opportunity for a goal. Well, we can see what's ahead of Raleigh. Starts it out right and that's where it stays. Disappointing result for Geelong. Important miss. Only four minutes to go, Hutto. Need to kick them. Yeah, there's got to be no advantage by the breeze, surely. With no. the roof closed, perfect conditions, you just run straight towards goal and kick towards the middle of the goals. It really was an ordinary kick in the finish. Bowden to himself and then goes short. With precision, finds Duncan Calloway. Wider still to his brother Andrew. He goes close to the wing, gathered by Tawny, in towards the middle. Hilton is there, just as backup support for Gasper, and then runs away from the mark and kicks rather ordinarily. Great mark. It was intended for Gregor but uh, the young fella Spritz did well. Goes in towards half forward. Bissell couldn't take it. Some shepherding provided. Bissell backs up. Second effort, terrific. Left foot kick to half forward. Geelong are on a charge. Tristan Lynch, handball over the top. Not bad, Gary Hockey. Goes back to Houlihan. He's caught by Andrew Callaway. He's tackled by Andrew Callaway. Hell didn't have the ball. A power allows play to go on. Hilton goes wide and finds Holland. And so the Tigers on the rebound. Logan Strong down to Benny Gale versus Graham. Who's going to be best at ground level? Graham the advantage. And he goes to the boundary line. Certainly the boundary line side. Sanderson will be happy to see it over. And the Cats get out of that one. Three minutes to go. And they've just rallied here, the Cats, in the last five minutes. Riccardi's been the catalyst there. Ignited a bit of a flame here for him. Got him started. Two goals. Still 29 points, though. It's a big advantage as we go towards half-time, particularly if they can add to it here, the Tigers. Burke was a chance to. Tivendale over the top. Sanderson had to work hard and did that pretty well. And a bounce again, the result. So 10-3 to 5-4. Geelong's defence has been under enormous pressure. Stoneham against Gale. Stone Dragasevich. Well tackled. Knights. Oh, he Three. again just popped it out, didn't he? King! Oh, somehow got through. Sets up a chance for the Tigers. Two on one. No mark. Knights will go again. Can he get clear? Great tackle. Spritz. Oh, another throw. Another throw. That time the umpire saw it. <laughs> Missed the first one. Got the second one then. It was a throw. Well, he's a master. Matthew Knights, that's for sure. An outstanding player, but that one <laughs> was a gift. And I think Gregor Sevich actually missed the goal. So Spriggs, who's really kept on trying very hard today, said seven possessions, but he's really had a crack. Mitch and Stoneham, the two targets for Geelong, but Burt just read the ball beautifully. A few Tigers away to his right, and he's going in that direction into the pocket. Knights will have to go for the mark here. Good spoil, Sanderson. Shoal. This is Tawny. Just a flying snap right into the square. Holland, Rogers, and McGrath happy to concede with the clock down to under two minutes. Harrison onto the ground, going to uh, the forward line for Richmond and unattended at the moment. Kick goes down towards the wing. It's gathered here by Lynch. Lynch kicks it forward. Ottens from behind. Had his name written all over it, but the, the crumbing ability of the Tigers across their half-back and full-back line. Brilliant kick by Gasper. Knights, half-forward. Mark taken by Dragosevic. Should kick a goal. Mark Dragosevic joins in. And he does kick Richmond's 11th goal. Time, Geelong look half a chance. Richmond seem to have the answers. Well, they hadn't scored for a while, Richmond, so Geelong had kicked two goals. But Richmond, very good here. Matthew Knight's made plenty of space. He's very good at that. Uses the ball beautifully. Dragosevic had no option but to go long and kick truly. So Bomber Thompson with a lot on his plate as we go towards half time. 
Six goals again, the, the margin for the Tigers. Still time for one more for either team. Under pressure. They've been good, the Tigers have been very hard at it. Uh, tackling, smothering. Yeah, just been very hard at it. Callaway. 43 seconds remaining in the quarter. King against Ottens. Who's going to grab the loose ball? Clark, he's over the top of it. 30 seconds to go now in the quarter as the clock continues to count down. So either side would have to be pretty clean on this possession if they were to add to their total before the half. 168 possessions to Richmond, 120 to Geelong. King got the tap, Riccardi wrapped up. And with eight seconds to go, that will just about be the ball game for the first half. And what a half it's been by the Tigers. Siren will sound as soon as the umpire puts the ball down into the turf. So what a half by Richmond. Matthew Knights leading the way. Had 11 possessions to half time. Big challenge for Geelong, their biggest of the season so far. Cats have lost just one game. They're without Ronnie Burns though for the rest of this match and probably a few to come. But a great half of football by Richmond, Paul Couch. Well, the midfield's been very good for Richmond. Broderick's had 11 possessions. Bitterskin and the halfback, Flanks had 11 kicks and three handballs. But their taller players and marking forwards for Richmond have been very good. Ottens, Gale, Holland have been very good. Their attack on the ball is sensational. Harassment. And Robbo, can Geelong come back? Very, very difficult task, especially if Richmond keep playing at, uh, at the passion and grit that they've used in the first half. Tigers by six goals. And welcome to Game Day Halftime. We're here at Colonial Stadium where the roof is closed. Geelong are playing Richmond here indoors. And now I'll take you through some of the first half highlights. As we can see here, the ball going in long from Ben Holland. A big kick to the goal square. A contest and Andrew Kellaway doesn't often kick a goal. Running in and kicking a great goal to get the Tigers off to a good start. Another strong mark here from Ben Holland. Who actually does a handball here before he gets back off the mark to a running Joel Bowden. And Joel Bowden, as he does so often, running through the lines and kicking a great goal. Now, what about this for a contest from Jason Mooney? Handball up to Riccardi, who got the first score on the board for the Geelong players today. And we're in a comedy of errors here, really. You can see the ball getting flicked out here by Holland over to Joel Bowden, who just couldn't quite pick it up and therefore missed a good opportunity to kick a goal. Now, a contest here in the forward line with Rogers running onto it and kicking a, a pretty sharp spot for a goal. Now, what about this for bad news for Cat supporters? Ronnie Burns doing a hamstring in that first half and you'd expect him to be missing a bit of footy and he went off and uh, went straight to the ice pack and you'd expect him to be missing a fair bit of goal, fair bit of the ball. Now what about a long kick from Brad Ottens? This bike is one of the best kicks in the competition and really drove that ball forward. Now we see the bit of a contest here, a, a bit of a turnover it really was as it goes into towards the forward line, uh, over the back spills to Adam Hellman who ran in and kicked the goal. That's what he's in the team for, to kick those type of goals. Now Tom Harley, look at this for courage for a backman, running back into the oncoming contest and kicking a goal. Now a, a boundary thrown inside the 50 metre area to the Tigers and a great goal flipped over the top there from Tivendale. Now centre bounce, they're very important the centre bounce clearances as we highlighted. A quick kick up to David Minch who took a strong mark and went back and kicked a goal for the Cats. And Melbourne and Perth viewers will be taking a replay of that game. Please turn away now if you don't wish to see the score. We'll be back after the break with the highlights of the other two games with Todd Viney and Tony Shaw. It has been a wonderful friend to me throughout my coaching career and Ron, I could think of no one more appropriate to uh, hand this recognition certificate to me. Thank everyone associated, particularly with this great club, 
from its supporters to the support staff and particularly to the players over a long period of time who've put up with me and my antics and uh, I'm delighted that I've lived long enough to actually coach 500 games and uh, hope there's just a few more along the way. Thank you very much for your continued support. And there we see David Parkin before today's game being presented by Ron Barassi for a uh, 500 games Tony Shaw of coaching which is a fantastic effort and uh, no better man to present that award to him than of course Ron Barassi who himself was a bit of an icon in the coaching circles. Oh look David uh, is just a fantastic coach, an ornament to the game and uh, I've got the utmost respect for him as a coach. Uh, he just stood the test of time hasn't he and I saw Johnny Elliott stand there, he's sacked him a couple of times, he's reinstated him a couple of times but uh, deserves all the credit he gets, he's just a great man. The thing that I'm most impressed about with uh, David Parkin is that he's not only been a great coach for the players on the field, but he's also taken special interest for uh, what they do off the field. He's been a big advocate of playing or having a job outside of football, so I think you know, he's really given, given a good balanced uh, approach to footy. Education, the whole lot, he just, yeah, yeah. just works them through. No, he's a very well-rounded individual, I think, Tony Shaw, but you've been watching the Carlton Sydney game highlights for the first half. Take us through what's happened. Yeah, it's been a very tight tussle, but there's been some great pressure. You can see Jude Bolton chases down the Carlton player there, it's kicked off the ground. Now, Andrew Shawball hasn't kicked many goals in his career because he's been a backman, but again, Jude Bolton follows up. Gives it to Andrew Shawblue from 20 yards out, kicks a very good goal. Matthew Allen's been very dominant, you can see he has an effort there. Runs on again and uh, Greg Stafford didn't get goal side of him. He's a very good kick for goal, uh, Matthew Allen, he's a left footer and he kicked the first for the Carlton side. Just here, Wayne Swass, well if you're going to make them, if they're going to mark the ball, you've got to make them pay. Here you can see Camparelli goes to Hamill, drops an easy chest mark. Good follow up because he was under a bit of pressure. Out to Lappin and Lappin from about 50 metres just drills that ball and a fantastic goal. And Look at even the tilt of the head can make it come out a major, isn't it? Just fantastic work by Whitnell and Lappin on that occasion. Bolton again, he was very good in this uh, quarter. Gets the ball out to, uh, who was that, Nicks? And Nicks from about 50 metres out kicks a fantastic goal. Yeah, they were playing very good football. Look at a set play here at a boundary throw in. Lance Whitnell comes through Hickmont comes through in front of the pack and drills a fantastic goal. That is a set play and you don't see many of the goals kicked from those. I think we games. got that last week, sorry. It, we did, we talked about that, didn't we? Just to Andrew Shaw again, look at this for courage, running with the fly to the ball. He really ran hard off halfback here, Andrew. He went off the ground after kicking this goal for the Swans, but gee, he was working very hard. And he had some really smart play from Whitton. Look at that tap oh, on. But Andrew Mackay tries to get past his man and a great tackle by Stuart Maxfield. And Melbourne Villas will be taking a replay of the Carlton Sydney game. And if you don't wish to see the score, please turn away now. And Port Adelaide are playing Melbourne over at Football Park in South Australia. Todd Viney, take us through the first half highlights. Yeah, well, the first quarter was some uh, very hard clashes, and here is a couple of examples of that. Firstly, James McDonald does a bit of a back foot, lucky not to break his neck. Uh, Fabian Francis gives a quick kick out, and Shane Woden, who's been fantastic, puts his body right on the line and goes back and kicks the goal. Josh Franco's been very good. Port Adelaide played some very direct and quick football through the midfield, and Fabian Francis kicks the ball into an open forward line. Gets a very strong contest from Matty Primus, and Chad Corns snaps a goal. Port Adelaide have been pretty good out of the centre bounce, even though Jeff Weiss got his hand to the ball a fair bit. Port Adelaide have been able to clear the ball, and young Josh Carr gets the ball here and hits Treadway on a fast lead out from full forward, which is classic football. Unfortunately for Port Adelaide, though, goes back and hits the post for the second time in that quarter, which was uh, very costly. But David Neeps here, unfortunately, gets tipped under the ball for the Melbourne Football Club by Treadway. Comes the ball pretty well for a big fella. From about 45 metres on the run, goes back and kicks a really nice goal for the Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide team. Doesn't hit the post. He had to be sure goal side then, didn't he, Todd? Had to be goal side. Matty Rillen taking a real brave mark there from the Melbourne Footy Club. And David Schwartz took a strong mark here and went back and kicked the goal, which kept the Melbourne team in the in the hunt. Now, some good pressure by Matty Primes here. He's been, he hasn't had too many kicks, but by God, he's been a, given a real good contest. And Stuart Jew, who's been a good player, kicked a very good goal. And the Adelaide viewers will be taking a replay of that game. So if you don't wish to see the score, please turn away. Why did you do it? Why did you do that thing to me? Okay, some interesting scores in the first half there, boys. And we'll be back with game day post-match for the Sydney and Brisbane viewers with the highlights of all three games and the AFL ladder.
Half time and the third quarter about to get underway at Colonial Stadium. The Tigers, brilliant start and they were equal to it in that second quarter. In fact, improving their lead. Geelong, of course, will go into the second half without Ronnie Burns. Well, if you're a Richmond supporter, you might want to have another look at this game. 1-800-035-665 or got on the web at aflvideo.com.au for name a game. What do you think, Robbo? Well, the first few minutes is going to be important. I think it's uh, it's going to be the body language of the Cats as to whether they still feel, even though they trail by six, as to whether they can bridge the gap. It won't happen in the first few minutes, but I think the body language will tell us a lot. Well, King and Gale have done the ruck work for most of the day. Spriggs just didn't quite have sure hands then, but he got it through. Sanderson can get them long into attack. Mitch, gee, it looks like he's on today as far as his marking's concerned. Got to go back and kick a goal, though. This would be the ideal yeah, start, right. wouldn't it, Couchy? Exactly right, Rowan. You called it, but Gary Hocking in the centre square there. He's got to get more of the ball if they're going to win this game. That'll just stretch him that distance, I think, Mitch. He should be able to carry it, but he has been known to just push it a little bit when he goes long, and that's a good example. It might fall short, and Stone. then Stoneman taking the mark, and he should kick the goal from there. How do you see Barry Stoneham's role? I mean, I heard on the radio a week or so ago people give him a bake because his stats aren't big, but uh, how do you see him? Well, he was good in the second quarter there when he came on again. He used his physical strength. He kicked a goal. He's taken another mark up there, which have lacked a good tall forward to take a mark, Robbo. So he's been very handy today. Look, he's going to kick his two or three each week. And he puts it through. So just the start. Geelong needed to this third quarter. And David Mintz has taken some very important marks. He's taken four, in fact, for the day, and I think three. But Hockey was good in the midfield yeah. there, Hunter. He got the ball out, then Shepard give the blokes the space to work in. Mintz with a good mark there, but Stoner was fantastic there. Need more of that, the Cats are going to be in this game, because Ottens and Holland have been good for Richmond down the other end. Maybe Barry Stoneham knows David Mintz's kicking ability better than anyone. So Stoneham, the goal kicker. At the start of the third term, importantly for Geelong, they got the first score on the board. Gary Hocking taken to the ground by Gale. Kicked forward by Clark, but the ball will come back to that dynamic Geelong midfielder, Gary Hocking. Well, he only had seven possessions in the first half, and that's unlike Gary Hocking. So if he can really lift his play here, Geelong are going to be in this game for a long, long time. Been best on the ground the last two weeks. So if he gets a bit of the ball, the Cats are in this game. Well, he decides to go fairly direct. It drifts off to the uh, right half-forward area. The mark is taken by Bizzle. They just look as though they've, uh, they're prepared to lift their tempo. Bizzle's kicked to the goal square. He's got it again, though. No. Knocked away from Stoneham on this occasion. Through for a rush behind to Geelong. And we spoke about a stat, Robbo, before the game. 37 goals, 18. Geelong have kicked in the last quarter. Richmond 17, 18. So that gives you a middle edge to believe you're still in the game. Even though you're down by more than five goals. It's still not a margin to sit back and defend comfortably as Tristan Lynch tries to get back and recover. The ball spilling for a throw in about 75 to 80 metres around for the Geelong goal. They've kicked the first goal, they've kicked the first goal and the first behind of the third term and importantly they're making a little bit of a charge at the Tigers are the Cats. But Gale grabbed it and quickly unloading it. Callaway. Lynch. Geelong, was he held without it? The umpire said no, now he got one high. And that's why the Cats have been in every game here. They haven't won by big margins, but they to play out the full game. That's what you've got to do in league footy, and that's what they do so very well this year. Bizzle, oh, but Gale, outstanding mark. Really great contested mark from Benny Gale. And he's taken four marks now. And they're going to use Bowden as often as they can to come out of defence because he's such an outstanding kick. Tawny. Just link up. Bittescom has been a surprise today. He was crunched that time. His kick will drop a bit short. And Graham not, pa not paying a free kick. kick. Surprising. It's the worst decision for the day so far. Taffy feeding it back. Taffy is a left footer. Kicks it to half forward. Giving the Tigers a mark. Oh, well done, Ottens. Well done, Ottens. Rogers might get the rewards. Dribbling kick. Will have had the carry. Harley will get back there. And will take oh, it through for a behind. But in tight situations, Ottens is very good. When the ball's up in the air, sensational work just to tap the ball onto advantage of the Richmond players. 
Great grab from Benny Gale at the other end of the ground though, wasn't it? Back with the flight. Knew he was in danger, great strong mark, Gale. The kick short to Scholl. Scholl in turn to Corrigan, so Geelong have got it outside their defensive 50. Now Corrigan may have to kick into the area of Stephen King. Bizzle! Bizzle! Sensational! Magnificent leap and mark by Clint Bizzle. What can he do with the footy? Get caught with it? No! Didn't he do well to get out of that tight circumstance? And then kick towards full foot. And strong! No! Good mark in front. Played in front. Got the, got, the, got the reward. Played in front. Good work. I think he's a bit of an unsung hero, Darren Gasper, in that defence for Richmond. He's got to stand one of the tall forwards and uh, he does it pretty well week in, week out. Watch this magnificent leap and mark by Clint Bizzle. Just use the back of Brendan Gale, good technique. But Richmond have just dropped off their intensity. The first half they were very hard at it. This quarter not so much. Yet to kick a goal in this turn. The Cats have kicked one. Kick forward by Brendan Gale. Shoal will be able to relieve for Geelong. He didn't back himself and go to Graham there. Instead he turned around. But he gets Sanderson, good disposal out of the fence. Graham created an option through the middle of the ground, but he goes longer, again in the Bizzle direction. He's behind this time. And Hilton comes out and takes the mark. And he'll send it back from where it came. Good low pass. Dragosevic usually uses it pretty well. Got Daffy to his right. He's going to go short. Bitterscombe is a little bit off balance. It goes out very wide in the direction of Callaway. Andrew, good break. Andrew Callaway. Kicked it up towards full forward. Shoal in front, but Olsen's oh, always spilt it. Knights was on his left side. Plenty of space for Holland. Should drill the goal and does. Well play, Tigers. Well, they've answered the charge from Geelong. Ben Holland was very good in the first five minutes of the game against Geelong in the first quarter there. It was very good. Good switch by Bitterscombe. Good work here by Kelly to play on quickly. Just no talking here by the Geelong defenders. It's four against one there. And they left it for Ottens. Flicked the ball out to Knights. And Holland didn't let him down with a great goal. Well, Richmond now 10 goal kickers in this match. 12-5 lead the Cats 6-5. Still very much of the uh, third term still to be played. Riccardi over the top was Bitterscombe. Broderick King little fumble there by Clark, but he's backed up by Sanderson. His kick forward. Well done by Minch. O'Brien, exciting, exciting. And misses with the left foot snap at goal. He's quick, isn't he? Very. Smart play by David Minch, though. Just to flick the ball out sideways, Joe O'Brien. Great part of David Minch's play. Doesn't panic under pressure. What goes through the mind of the coach, Danny, then? Oh, well, made a think, bit of a run, haven't they? Oh, well, they have too long. you just got to keep at it. Persistence wins out, and that's what they've been doing all year. So you just keep it long with the same game plan. Kick long and direct, and that's what they've been doing too long. Rely on the disciplines of the players out there. Run down the oh. hand, and he's going to be penalised. Did he have a chance to get rid he of that? I think ball. not. Just oh, pick the ball up. That's where you wonder about some of the uh, younger umpires. They just don't have an understanding, I don't think, the pressure and the pace of the game. Good mark taken by Riccardi. Gets past the dasher, one bounce, looking to give the hand pass off. He's got a player running beautifully in support. That was Spriggs. That's a great set up and goal by Geelong. Couple of goals to David Spriggs, and I think there's a, an enormous future for a young man like that to show composure. Just his first year of AFL and set up by one of the more experienced players in Riccardi. Well, Riccardi's been involved in three out of the four goals for Geelong here. Doesn't panic. There was no one to give it too long into the forward line there. Spriggs, his disposal sometimes not so good, but this time very good. So the signs are there for Geelong. And whether they can actually get back into this game. There's another thing. Gale, the tap, Riccardi, as he said, is set them alight but the handball was to Bowden who's been even better for Richmond Callaway out wide, Knights in front Daffy well not a good handball Corrigan had time to look at his options and you would never have believed that, it was a terrible kick Callaway, good pressure by the Cats Daffy, a little fumble could have been costly but it wasn't, Callaway 
They're just under pressure, O'Brien did well. Bizzle a fumble. It's out of bounds. Yeah, they've lifted the rating here, Geelong. Very hard keep. at it. Tackling, chasing. Well, you've got to keep going now, don't you? Well, definitely. You can't just drop off at any stage. Overuse of the ball in the midfield again. One too many handballs. Get it long and direct to Holland and Ottens. Free kick went to Chaffee. Holland was there presenting himself. He's over the ball. Gets it out. Well picked up. Spriggs' kick smothered. Clark just dribbled it forward. Numbers with Richmond across half forward. Oh, yeah. Hawking Hocking must have got in the back. He played the mark, didn't he? His first touch by Gary Hocking there. Poor yeah, Brendan Gale's been pretty good. Oh, bad handball. It was a bad handball, but they'll get away with it. Or will they? Great play by Hurlihan. Spriggs just kicked it blindly. Kicked it blindly, and Andrew Callaway takes the relieving mark. Andrew Callaway, who kicked the first goal of the game, and now defending across that full back line. And the kick by uh, his brother Duncan. Now it's kicked forward by Tivendale. Inside the forward 50, gathered by Houlihan. Hand pass away. Harley under a little bit of pressure. Scholl wouldn't reckon he's given a hand pass in his life. Brad Scholl on this occasion kicks it to the opposition, who was Jason Tawney. Tawney's kick. They're going to get a goal here, Richmond. Holland's on the end of it. There was too much space there for the big fellow. It's amazing when you look as though you're going to take possession, the players seem to run in support and they got caught with the turnover. Well, there's a the turnover there. Defense. They were all went forward there and that's what happens. You play on at all costs. 50-50 situations. Go for it. Just a poor kick by Bradshaw. That's the first time he's looked in board today. There's been a few blokes that have been loose in there. He's missed them. And this time he's kicked it straight to a Richmond player. Bradshaw, 13 kicks, four marks, and a duck egg beside the handball listing. <laughs> we watch Ben Holland going for goal. He kicked a magnificent goal just a few minutes ago. He's kicked another one. He's a good kick for goal, that young man. Two goals to Ben Holland. And again, Richmond fight back. They lead the game by just under six goals. But more importantly, when Geelong put the pressure on, they hit back hard. A terrible kick here by Brad Scholl there. Should have went long and direct in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Go long and direct. Long, hard and high, and that's what he didn't do. Straight to the Richmond player there, and Ben Holland hasn't let them down. He's played pretty well today. Disappointing last week against Carlton. Brad Scholl certainly yes. getting the message. Get the message all right. After his error led to the Richmond goal, Spriggs, Riccardi, they have looked better Geelong in this quarter, but Richmond have held them up. Big chance for Mooney, he came through, went to ground, Burke, Callaway, and Hilton. Well, this can test the character of the Cats here. They've made one bad blue here. If they drop their head and give the game up, I don't think they will just with the way they played this year, but some sides can give it up easily after a bad mistake, drop their heads. So it's just a character here, see the five minutes so they can answer the call. Now Richmond have eroded almost half the quarter and they've maintained their lead. Knights just snatched it out of the air. Centering kick good. Callaway, big build up Tigers. Lots of space. Long he goes in the Otten's direction. Graham yes. giving away a free kick. So another goal coming up for the Tigers. And Ben Graham is not happy. We'll have another look at that on the replay. Well, didn't go for the ball. His eyes weren't on the ball. Touched his body first, Hutto. And it was a free kick there. Manhandled him early. It was over the shoulder, wasn't it? Yeah, just the pressure and buttons. Just his heights worried, Ben, today. Ben's suggesting to umpire John Harvey to have a look at the replay. Well, I think if Ben had a look at it, <laughs> he'd probably reckon that John Harvey might have been right. He might have got it right, do you think, Robert? Hutto's mate, ask Hutto what he thinks. Good afternoon to the Harvey family. As Ottens comes in and drills it. So the young star, Brad Ottens, has kicked three goals, one today, including a couple of magnificent goals and some fantastic marks. So we get another chance to have a look at this yeah. free kick. And Knights has been very good, been involved in the last two goals here. Duncan Callaway's not known for his great field kicking here, but kicked long, hard and high here to Ottens, who didn't let him down. Played front position, that's what you need to do at full forward, and is rewarded with a goal. Gee, the way Matthew Knight snatched the ball out of the air, though. It, uh, Quick hands, good player. Very, very effective, wasn't it? 14-5 to 7-6 in this quarter. Richmond have kicked three goals. 
Geelong have kicked only two. Tawny, King, Hilton. Gee, some terrific transference of the football there, ending in Burke. Burke kicks it out wide. Oh, oh so great mark! Well, when you go into uh, desperate territory like that, put your body on the line, and your efforts are rewarded. That's a terrific performance by Young Holland. He kicks across the half foot. That's a mark. Oh, well read, Hilton. The Richmond mark to Rory Hilton. Just playing in front all over the ground, the Tides here. They've been very good. Disappointing kick by Shoal, and that can be a real turning point in the game when you've got momentum. Geelong had a little bit of momentum there. Just a poor disposal like that. We saw that against Richmond against Carlton when Clinton King did a, a poor disposal and the floodgates opened. Just to strike the character here for Geelong just to fight back. This young bloke doing a very good job with his AFL career, Rory Hilton. Goes back and up, kicks a goal. That's the way to put pressure on the scoreboard against the opposition. Eleventh goal kicker for the Tigers. Richmond 15-5, lead Geelong 7-6. It's going to be a big job now. They trail by 47 points, the Cats. Yes, I think it's beyond them today. Robbo, it's just been very good. Richmond hard at it. Matthew Knights has been sensational today with his disposal. Otten's very good. Holland has stood up today with Matthew Richardson out. It's a credit to him. Well, the Tigers almost establishing an invincible position here. Still plenty of time to go in this third quarter, though. Hocking eventually got it out, but put Clark under pressure. Riccardi, they've just got numbers everywhere, the Tigers. McGrath to hold them up this time. Hasn't had a good day, Bluey. That's two in a row. Hardly giving them something off half back. Goes for centre half forward in Stoneham. Clean knockaway though. Riccardi took them on and in the end he turned it over. Could have been lucky for them, but it wasn't. Hilton, he took them on as well and also got into trouble. Tivin Dallas, not very well wrapped up really in the end, and they'll get away with it. Tong had three players around Tivin but they didn't apply an effective tackle. And Burke runs away with a wobbly, beautiful pass into Rogers who fumbled. Bittescom has just had a field day today. 16 possessions for McCat. Long one. Holland in great position. Or oh, Ottens. It was a good spoil by Harley. The move's been made. Another goal out of the Tigers. Dragosevich. Ben Graham has gone forward for Geelong. The avalanche at the other end continues. A bit of scans being very good at working hard off the half back flank here. But Holland and Ottens have worried the Geelong defenders today. Good work, Nath Knights here, just to put a little bit of pressure on Dravis. Civic didn't make any mistake there. They've kicked a lot of those quick snap goals today, Tigers. And the floodgates have opened. Just that one mistake by Brad Scholl, and away you go, Tigers. Maybe Dragosevic a little fortunate. The tackle by Raleigh actually turned him around towards the goal and uh, threw it on his boot. But it goes your way when you make your own luck, don't you? Just right. keep forcing it, and uh, it's amazing how the bounce of the ball seems to go in your favour. Look at this, gee, they've got uh, terrific numbers around the ball, the Tigers. Now the bounce is gathered by Tristan Lynch. His kick lands the ball at half forward, but when it hits the ground, they're mopping up beautifully. Richmond, Tawny grab, Minch will kick a goal, will he? David Minch against the trend. Second goal to David Minch. And if the Cats are to get out of this, it's going to be a monumental effort. They trail by 47 points, but Minch has given them some chance. Well, yeah, it will be well, a monumental I, effort. I just believe in modern football that when you've got time left, there's eight minutes in this turn, there's 26, 28 minutes in the last quarter. They've been good, the Tigers, though. Persistent all day. It's going to be a, a long, hard road. Well, for you never give up. Never, ever give never up. Never give up, but it's a long way off it. How far were Adelaide behind Port Adelaide last week? Seven goals in the third quarter, and they won the game. Mance in the ruck now for the Cats. Ottens likewise for the Tigers. Tristan Lynch has had a fair dip for them, Geelong. Bizzle eventually got out of that somehow, then he got one high. Nothing doing to the umpire. Tristan Lynch, quick kick. 
Graham and Stoneham, the targets for John. Oh, brilliant gather from Danny O'Brien. And he should kick a goal. Oh, yeah. oh no! Oh, dear. Should have kicked it. Inside 50, go for goal. Didn't he do everything right except for the finish? Good play by the Richmond defender there. Didn't rush him. Closed his space. Put him in a little bit of doubt, Andrew Callaway. And a poor handball. You said inside 50, have a go. What about inside 20? <laughs> I was trying to be kind, but I... Bitterscombe. Go for goal on all occasions. Alton's the target. Clark tried to keep it in. Oh, that's cruel, isn't it? <laughs> How did he make his judgment? David Clark kicked it. Luck. Kicked it onto the Richmond bloke's shin. Oh. Bit of a hospital kick to Bizzle too, but he had the time. Look, I can't resist having a go at you two, fair dinkum. Big Kings and the Gulls. You're long and you've given up already. Couldn't take it. Bowden, Stoneham, too slow to get rid of it. Knights versus King. The Knights and the King. Robert oh, wins out. Just my loyalty to Geelong, but I thought Richmond would probably win the game. Yeah. Because they were very good last week. I saw them for the first time, and I reckon they're playing as a team. It's the first time I've ever seen Richmond, when blokes were signed jobs, work very hard. And Bowden last week was sensational. Oh, look at the cockroach. Danny Frawley banging the table. He broke the phone last week. Houlihan to Steinfurt. Steinfurt's left foot snap at goal. Will land in the square? No, it won't. It'll be marked very well by Chaffee. Right in the goal square. Good kick to delivery. Perfect. Duncan Callaway. Hilton. Down towards half forward, bouncing ball, a little awkward, gathered by McGrath. Geelong should get a goal here, they've got two on one. The player with the advantage was Bizzle, handball over the top, opportunity for Houlihan, short kick too high. Player in front there was Graham, got the hand pass back, O'Brien gives away a little bit of ground, Bitterscombe, Gasper, throws it onto his boot, Shoal. Who can he kick it to? Sometimes you're better off to let it go out of bounds there, Darren Jasper, and start again. Scholl into the pocket. Good kick. Good use of the ball. A very good kick, and he's found Houlihan. Well, he got the message on the phone there, Robbo. We saw early in the, this quarter with his poor disposal halfway through the second quarter, but he used it beautifully there. Wanted to give it to his teammate. Good Probably kick. the uh, second, maybe the third highest attendance at Colonial Stadium. Over 35,000. How would that go, Hutto? Probably the third biggest, would it? Essendon and Port Adelaide the best. Yeah, Collingwood, Footscray, maybe Bulldogs. the second. And Bulldogs, Essendon we've had as well. He's oh, missed it. No, never any chance there. Adam Houlihan kicks it behind. Well, that's just an indication because Adam Houlihan usually kicks him. He's a beautiful kick for goal. And when things are not going right, and kicking a point there, he's usually a, the catalyst in kicking for goal. He's got a beautiful technique and missed it. Richmond still very much in control of this match. Otten's flying up, couldn't take it. Bizzle, can he use it? Clark, another set shot. That's a better kick. That's a much better kick. Oh, he's hurt his hand, I think. Geelong certainly more motion about them in the last five minutes. Well, they're trying hard, and it's just that poor disposal we spoke about. Just working hard. They haven't had a great deal of opportunities this quarter, but they've made the most of them here. Quick hand by Bizzle and David Clark, who's not renowned for his field kicking, kicks a nice goal there. So they're not without a chance, I suppose. Seven goals behind, but it, it would be very hard to see them win, but they've been very persistent and hard all day, Geelong, Robbo. 16-5 to nine goals, eight. Five goals in this term for Richmond and four goals for Geelong. The bounce back at the centre, Mench doing the ruck work. The ball at ground level, it's a hotly contested issue. Duncan Calloway is an absolute desperado. And they needed to make the change there with David Mench going to the ruck there. Brendan Gale was jumping all over Stephen King, he's just gaining confidence all the time. So a good change by Mark Thompson, just to rotate it around up against Ottens. Aaron Fiora getting ready to come onto the ground. We've got four and a half minutes left in the term. Geelong a chance to run away from this uh, ruck contest. Sanderson kicks the ball forward. And the crumbing. It is Stoneham who tries to get the ball clear. But on this occasion running away is Chaffee. Kicks directly towards goal. 
And at the back, oh, a little push out, Harley. Umpire was there, he saw it. Just off to the side, handball away, Sanderson. Sanderson kicks towards the wing. The ball bouncing a little awkwardly, and David Burke, little push out by Barry Stoneham. Umpire allows that to be uh, all clear and above board, and gives the okay for the boundary umpire to throw it in. It's a very big little push out that one, wasn't it? It was, and uh, the boundary umpire, Barry Stoneham being held, Riccardi being held, umpire taking no notice, Tawny gives away a little bit of ground, well done, knock back to Hilton, in turn in towards half-back, Chaffee, forced to kick quickly, McGrath, good mark. That's better, he's got to stand up now, Blue. Was that a great opportunity day? Opportunity off to the other side of the ground. Oh, I turned back into play. Tom turned back into the uh, right side of this uh, Colonial Stadium. And the kick forward. They've got to get a goal out of this. Three and a half minutes left. Did Geelong have the, the ball within scoring range? The umpire will call for a bounce. And one thing Tom Harley did there was not turn and look and have a good look around. He should have had a look to the left there. Adam Houlihan was on his own there and break the play up. Turn back into play. Richmond by 39. As the clock counts down towards the end of this third quarter, Stoneham O'Brien all trying. Houlihan in and out, Bizzle did well, did very well. O'Brien straight up and down, more Tigers than Cats. And a great mark taken by Harrison. What a terrific mark. That big Stephen King coming over the top. No one on the mark. Oh, oh. he went short and Bittescom just able to hold it up and take the mark. So it was going out of bounds in the full. Oh, it is! Oh. That was a great catch. Great catch by Burke in the gully. So the Tigers just showing a few just wobbly signs, you might say, but they still lead by 39 points and really should go on and win this game comfortably. But they've just become a little bit more negative in the last few minutes. Is that a mark? No. Gee, that could have them. Graham could just about go along from here. Hands on his own in the goal square. Stoneham. Stoneham. Oh. Houlihan couldn't hold it up and the Tiger defence which has been just absolutely magnificent today will stand up yet again Dragosevic has made position uh, close to the wing then he goes to that position where David Burke marks his kick is a bit of an ordinary one oh. and a very good mark it was important that he grabbed that Harley and he did well, here we go McGrath can go over the top Riley straighten up go down the ground get rid of it quick he does. He lobs the ball inside the forward 50. Oh! Ben Graham! Excitement there from Ben Graham. And, Come back and he'll nail this. And give the Geelong fans something to cheer about. Come from the side. Sensational mark there. Got the ride. One of the ball. Fantastic. And he's only 45 out here. He can kick at 70. I tell you what, the message from the 35,000 fans, if it can get to the rest of the AFL football people, Get in here, I'm sure that this is a terrific stadium for footy and we're being treated here today. The atmosphere is sensational, Robert. Absolutely sensational. He's 50, he's 50, he's got across the line here. The young fella. Oh, oh, Aaron Fiora. Good spot, Gouchy. He's got across the line, you can't hear that, son. Jimmy Stein, where are you? <laughs> well, I think Jimmy would probably be saying, I'm not the only one now. They might forget about that from uh, well, the time way back. Well, the party, because they did this last week when Clinton King made a mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> ben Graham kicks the goal. Well, a minute to go in this corner. Here he comes again. He's coming off Aaron Fuel. Paul. But he beat there for uh, 30 seconds. Young fella, just... You feel like crying, <laughs> you? <laughs> you feel like crying. Hey, there's a hole down there. There's a little hole. Give him a break, oh, he's just on. a young bloke trying to make his name. And, uh, he's only trying to cost his oh, He's man. made a shocking blue, let's yeah. forget about yeah, it. That's right. Geelong have got the goal. But more importantly, Geelong have got back to within 33 points. And the message would be, don't worry about it. Just exactly, exactly. But he will, I tell you what, if they, <laughs> <laughs> if they come back. Oh, last minute then of this quarter, can the Tigers respond? Hilton, very wide. Loose ball, Holland is in front. Tried to use his teammates and Harrison chipped it up. Geelong have pushed an extra man back across half back and they've used it to some effect in the last uh, well, five or so minutes as they've worked their way back into the contest. 
Steinfurt long, Graham again, no mark. Harrison was pretty well tackled. Tigers still got a chance with 30 seconds to go in the quarter to score. That was a Sevich. good mark. Well read by Dragosevic. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Rogers the target. Steinfurt over the top. Takes the mark. It's not great delivery to Stoneham. Who did pretty well just to get it to the front. Shoal. Rode the bump. Oh, oh crucial. Got, it by Brian. got it back. Steinfurt. Oh. But apart Aaron, from that, well, the message would be: is look, son, you've made a mistake. Get on with your footy. Don't worry about it. He's going to feel. He's got his head down at the moment. The poor kid. He'd be worried about the turnover. If it's going to have an effect on the game here, because Geelong have lifted after that goal was kicked by Ben Graham. Down the other end, Ott has still been very good. Holland, Matthew Knights was very good in that quarter. But it's still a game of footy here. The Cats are not out out of it yet. And Hutto. Geelong is still a chance here. Nick Daffy hasn't had a big day today. Hey, you both laugh like oh, we did. what we I said before. Yeah. Well, Geelong, their goal kickers. Well, we can make mistakes. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Two to Sprig, Stoneham and Mench. Aaron the, Fewer, mate. Oh, Sorry, sorry. Oh, For the Tigers, three to Wattons and two to Dragosevich, Bowden and Holland. Richmond, 16-5, 101. Still leading the way at three-quarter time. Geelong at 10-8, 68. Frenetic third quarter at Colonial Stadium and in the end Richmond kicked five goals one and Geelong five goals four so they narrowed the lead by three points but you'd have to question us whether it'll be enough Richmond 16-5 to 10-8 at three quarter time. Mitsubishi Motors, Matt Stats and the Tigers well ahead there boys in the total number of possessions. Well they're not big on using the ball Geelong, they go very long and direct, have a lot like North Melbourne, very little handball in a pack situation, as soon as they get clear in a pack, kick it long and that's what the game of play is, that's why they've been so successful and Richmond have probably overused the ball there once or twice in through the midfield and they show why just their overuse of handballs, just giving one or two extra handballs where they're not needed and probably not having the flow through. How about the bottom one, how do you want to, how do you, would you like to analyse that? Richmond uh, 39 times inside their forward 50 and they've only kicked one goal so what obviously uh, a lot of their goals coming from outside huh? Yeah, it's, a 50. it's an unbelievable no, no, that, stat, isn't that, it? that can't be right. That, no, that's 16, not right. I think that was just the total number of goals they've kicked. Been inside 50 two more times in Geelong for the day. So last quarter, Cats had the momentum at the end of the third. Which way will the first goal go? Tigers with the first chance. Holland, head down, bottom up. His handball into space might be okay. No desperate stuff, Mance, but King was pretty good then to get it out to Ottens. Big marking contest here. Oh, it's a great mark. Rogers has taken it. And he can just about put it beyond doubt if he kicks this, just about. He hasn't had a lot of the ball today, Rogers. Only four kicks, one handball. Kicked a goal. Good snap in the second quarter there. But it's good work by Ben Holland. When the ball came out of the centre clearance there, he was in front of Tim McGrath. Made the option there. If it swung around the other way, Tim McGrath in front, well, the ball's down the other end. But his work today has been sensational and should deserve a pat in the back from Danny Frawley today. Now, Rogers. Well, surely can't miss from there. No mistake. Great start by the Tigers in this last quarter. A good centre. Good centre square work by Richmond then to flick it out there. Ottens has been very good, been pushed up into the ruck position there. There you see Holland in front of Tim McGrath there. Pushed the ball out quickly, he's been very good. Cleeton King quickly. Handball, feed out. Ottens again, butted up. Good second effort. And a goal to Rogers. Amazing what happens when you're in front. Oh, you've got to be in front. Ball uh, bear, oh, going through the air a little awkwardly and dropping. Rogers took the mark. So important first goal of the last term to the Tigers. A chance to go forward, but it's chopped off on this occasion by Gary Hockey. Awkward kick through the air. Barry Stoneham very cleverly done. Bizzles on the end of it. Bizzles flying shot at goal. It was well marked back there by Andrew Callaway. They reckon a feed's hard to get in the Callaway household. 
both very lousy. Duncan Calloway and Andrew Calloway as far as giving opportunities or allowing their opponents to have any opportunities at the football. Broderick, neatly, very neatly to David Burke. Burke just forward of the wing. Hand passes back. Broderick has provided the running support. Missed his target by a big margin with the hand pass. Well done, Sanderson. Handball laterally. Spriggs. Well tackled. Ball spills. Nearly taken by Burke, but he left it for Steinford. Sanderson's done well. He's kept going. He'll kick all the way to the goal square, but it'll be marked again by Andrew Calloway. Right in his defensive goal square. The player giving him the target to kick to was Bowden. Bowden goes wider for King. King can go to Knights. He does just that. Knights can run close to the 50 metre line. I would have thought he played on. That's the way the umpire sees it. Now Knights being forced to kick quickly. Goes to the goal line. Nearly the mark to Holland. Daffy. Daffy. Snapshot at goal. There might have been a hand pass on. But Nick tried to create uh, something miraculous. They oh. desperately need it. Hilton couldn't take the mark. Geelong a chance, gee that nearly knocked his head off Raleigh was on the end of the hand pass Bizzle, left foot kick, Spriggs is underneath it and Spriggs is marked in front of Knights looked alright as far as I was concerned Spriggs paid between left back pocket and left half back flank 17-5 to 10-8 Tigers comfortably hold the lead Stoneham offered himself and he takes it goes for centre half forward Oh, big fellow, Alton's over the top, but uh, he's been real good today, Alton's fantastic stuff. Just his reach when he hits the ball at the highest point there, gives no one else an opportunity. He's got long extended arms, makes it very difficult for the opposition side. He's taken four marks today, but some of them have been fantastic. McGrath, good contested grab on that occasion. The Cats have not made any progress in the first four minutes, in fact they're down a goal. Clark running nowhere really and just hopeful stuff. That's uh, just that's yeah, not good enough. Harrison was unattended. This is Bowden. Been on his own a lot of the time. Andrew Calloway off half back. Nowhere to go. But he did pretty well probably in the end. Didn't panic at least. Dragasevic. Gee, look at the pace. He just broke away from Shoal. Hurried kick though. Might be alright. Somehow it gets through everybody, but a free kick, and it's going Richmond's way to Holland. I'm not sure what for. Just a stat here, I know I've calculated that only 12 players of Geelong have only had 10 possessions or less. So that's just an indication of the game here. They're on balls, haven't had a lot of the ball left. Wood has been a bit quiet. Spriggs has only had 15 possessions. You need more of that to be an on baller. So Holland, big kick. Not a great one as far as accuracy is concerned. Play on. Play on. No, it's a... Now it's through for a behind. It's just one part of Richmond's play today. That extra handball and they don't have to give it. Play a little, a little bit more direct and they'll be even a better side, the Tigers. Well, there a chance here, Geelong, through Clark. Accepted the kick in and then went towards half forward. But really, when you're in a position like that, to kick it straight to the opposition is just... Absolutely sacrilegious. Yeah, you've got really to make give more to of you. that. Looking down the ground and kicked it. Well, pretty well straight to Darren Gasper. He didn't take the mark, but he was interfered with and received the free kick. Gasper from uh, close to the centre of the ground. And he kicks it straight to the opposition. McGrath. Looking to play on. Obviously, they're pretty desperate now, Geelong. Sanderson's kick lands the ball at half forward. No crumbing there for Geelong. Beautifully mopped up. Chaffee and Hilton combined. Kick forward. Still no mark taken. Riccardi. Ball slipped out of his grasp. Gary Hocking to Corrigan. Corrigan's kick is rather ordinary, but it might be advantageous. Graham couldn't take it. Handball came from Houlihan to Clark. Wider still Minch. Minch. Bit of an up and under. Stay down, Spriggs. You should do the roving on the forward line. No. It's knocked away by Chaffee, who's probably played his best game for the Tigers. Handball to uh, Hilton. He, in turn, finds Andrew Calloway. Well, they've got Spring in the step. Danny Foley will be delighted with this last quarter. Andrew Calloway's been brilliant, although his disposal often lets him down. It does again this time. 
They've certainly been up and about. Both sides have had chances through the middle, but haven't been able to turn them into anything. Houlihan. Can he do something with it? Should have laid off the handball. Instead, blazed away. Steinem at three to beat. Couldn't do it. Ottens was up. They'll take it over the line. And that was pretty close to being deliberate. Not paid. Yeah, it wasn't the right option there. Will the hand should have went short down. A bloke 20 metres in there. Didn't think through the situation here. <laughs> and he reckons it was deliberate. I'll tell you what, that umpire's going to invite that bloke for dinner on Monday night. But he looked very deliberate too. Boundary throw in. Stoneham doing the ruck work. Chaffee. O'Brien left it behind, in went Bro Broderick, gave it back to Burke, and he's quite happy to concede a behind to Geelong. We've had lots of discussion about uh, that play being rewarded for the opposition with three points. What do you think, Couchy? Uh, just don't muck around with the rules. Yeah. The game's pretty good at the moment. Fair enough. Clinton King accepts the kick in. Got a player running to provide a target, that's Harrison. One bounce, he can have another one. Now he decides to just lob the ball in towards half forward. Gasper. No mark. McGrath, under a bit of pressure. So is Dragosevic. Raleigh. Now Riccardi just throws it onto his boot. And of course, uh, Harrison is there Tigers. to Holland. Holland into the pocket and Dragosevic is marked within 50 metres. Been pretty good. He's kicked a couple of goals, the young man. Kicks the ball to the front of the square. It's a Richmond mark. Watches again. Third in line. Judged it a little better. And from limited opportunities, Matthew Rogers could, with his sixth kick, kick his third goal. Well, if he's playing for pocket, Robbo, if he kicks three, he's done his job today. Yep, yep. And if he kicks this one, he has done his job. It has. Most of the Richmond players have, had a. He's not saying much. Rogers, uh, I, I like the look of him more on the forward line. He's, uh, he can take a mark. His snapshot earlier was a beauty. He's good boy. He has kicked his third goal. A different role to what we've been used to from Matthew Rogers over the last couple of seasons. Danny Frawley quite prepared to leave him on the ground on that full forward line and he's kicked his third goal and snuffed out any possible chance Geelong may have had 18-6 to 10-9 the margin is now 45 points well Raleigh should have launched himself at it too he just sat back and went Rogers went for the mark it's twice now in this quarter that Matthew Rogers has kicked two goals from Mark well Bomber Thompson hasn't faced this at all in his coaching career their only loss was by a goal against the Kangaroos with five points. King very vigorous, perhaps could have been rewarded for his tackle. But Richmond still coming home strongly. Has thoroughly deserved their win today. Well, that's been the great thing about Geelong. They've been in every game, Hutto, and that's why it's been so pleasing. But Rogers prepared to play in front here again. Had the space in front of him, worked in it beautifully, and Knight's disposal today has been sensational. He's been the catalyst in that third quarter when they needed a couple of goals. He set them up. Been very good. Only 17 possessions. Usually gets to 30. But more importantly, everyone's been very good. Now well, here's Rogers. Good accuracy. And will it carry? Oh. I think it did. Another one to the Tigers. Another one to Rogers. Well, four goals from seven kicks. And any coach would be happy with that. Robbo, four goals from seven kicks. He's been very good. Paul Broderick's coming off the ground here. He's been very good early. He was sensational there. In and under, feeding the ball out. Bowden was good. Their, nice. spread, their spread of oh, good players has been much wider than Geelong. Hasn't well, it? I think they've played a lot better with that. Um, Campbell. Wayne Campbell. The last four weeks have been very good. Their commitment's been very good. Paul Broderick uh, may be going to the rooms. Uh, looks a little weary, but uh, it's amazing. A victory would certainly bring back the enthusiasm. Kick out wide was from King. And eventually Bowden receiving from Harrison. Bowden, if he can get past, he can't quite, but he's manufactured something. I don't 
quite know whether that was meant for Tivendale and whether it covered the required distance is also questionable. But the mark has been paid to Tivendale. Kicked the goal earlier. And you can see there he kicked it from just outside the 50. It may have gone in excess of the necessary margin. Tivendale will shoot for goal. 19-6 to 10-9. Their conversion has been pretty good too, the Tigers. Going for their 20th goal. What a kick. Wasn't that a beauty? Well, when you see a scoreline like that, 20 goals from 26 attempts. They've obviously done a lot of things right in their uh, setting up a play. Putting it into the, the renowned corridor, maybe. Well, they just haven't panicked when they've had the ball, Robbo. The pressure to be able to release the ball. They worked in numbers. They're talking, shepherding, blocking. It's been a real credit to Richmond. And they deserve the scoreline. 20 goals, 6. They really did start it off the first bounce today. So almost out to a 10 goal margin. Briggs has kept on trying for Geelong. I guess good experience for him it is. Well Paul Corrigan's done a good job on Nick Daffy. Nick Daffy's coming back on the ground. Daffy has had just 11 possessions. Kick one behind, so no goals. Bottoms has been great. There's Spriggs again, 16th possession. Riccardi it was that set it up. Hocking now has pushed forward. Over the top of it, O'Brien, Chaffee. And there's the example of the Tigers there. Three against one against Gary Hocking there. And I, they really have targeted Gary Hocking today because he's been best on the ground the last two occasions. Well, that's what he got. And they've the tackled him hard. You watch. Not much. They did dump him, but I don't quite know whether it deserved a free kick. They've put him under a lot of pressure today, Richmond. Only seven kicks and six handballs. You have done a good job when you've restricted Gary Hocking to just that, having your 13 possessions. And he struggles to cover the distance from only 30 out. Stoneham usually kicks these, but uh, not this time. Kicked a couple Barry Stoneham. He's had uh, just four kicks for the match, three marks and a couple of goals. He's done a lot of hard work, Barry Stoneham, today. Boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for Geelong. Gee, they desperately need a goal, and Hocking hits the post. When I say they desperately need a goal, I mean uh, 10 goals. They haven't added to their goal tally from three-quarter time, and Richmond have kicked four against that. Tigers get outside their defensive 50 very comfortably. Hilton wide to Ottens. Ottens, what has he got to look forward to? Into the middle. Mark is taken by the youngster who uh, gave away the 50 metre penalty. I don't think uh, too many people will allow uh, Aaron Fiora to forget that. Matthew Knights go inside the forward 50, he does. You can see Matthew's got real comfortable kicking with the right boot, can't you? King, he's comfortable. And eventually the mark was taken by Houlihan at centre-half back for Geelong. Through the middle, Corrigan, this is McGrath now. Nothing up forward, he can't kick it long. because it's Two it was, on seven there. Yeah, it was all Richmond. O'Brien just left it behind. Chaffee. Harrison. Dragasevic. And the build-up continues. Ezra Poyas. Unloads it to the square. Rogers has been a revelation in this last quarter. Graham back in defence now. Houlihan, who certainly hasn't been Geelong's worst. Sanderson. And through centre half back, there's a few options. Stoneham feeding. Hocking. They've got it to the middle. Clark. Again, no one to go. Absolutely nowhere to go to but short. And Richmond, he's going to have to hold the ball up, man. She can't kick it yet because. Just, just when he took the mark, it was 8 to 1 in favour of Richmond. He's inside wait. their forward 50, inside Geelong's forward 50. Oh, he waited and then he just popped it up. Really wasn't a very good option. Tigers defence has just been brilliant today though. Harrison went to ground. Fight by Chappie was good. Harrison again. King trying to be fancy and he was just. 
Oh, well, that's close to being 50, but it was a little bit of acting as well. Harrison off his left again. Pinpoints Dragosevic, who's within range. Joel Bowden today, 15 kicks, 13 handballs, 9 marks, 3 tackles, 2 goals, 1. Great day's work. Just run them off their legs. And he was one of the instigators too at the start of the match. That's the more important, the key. And Mark Dragosevic, relatively quiet, but he's had 10 possessions and taken 8 marks, surprisingly. He's usually a good kick of the footy. That one just a little bit across the face. Still in, McGrath conceding. 20 goals, 7 plays, 10 goals, 10, with 6 minutes remaining. The kick in duties being done by the skipper, Ben Graham. Clark to McGrath. McGrath straight down the ground. And on this occasion, he finds Bizzle. Bizzle onto the left boot. Kicks in the direction of Mitch. Mitch tried to just create a chance there for Britton Sanderson. Bit of misunderstanding between the two Geelong players. And eventually Ben Holland will be pretty happy with his efforts there. He just uh, trundled the ball on in front of himself and forced a boundary throw in about uh, 75 metres around from the Geelong goal. And what the Tigers have done is pushed a line back. They put their wingers in the half back and just created the congestion there for the Geelong forwards. Mitch doing the ruck work, Chaffee and Spriggs. Mark Chaffee not really enjoying that uh, thrust towards the boundary line from David Spriggs. 57 points is the margin in favour of Richmond. Hutto has already mentioned that uh, Geelong have been pretty good. They've won six and lost one, and the one they lost was only a, a very small margin. Oh. Gee, that was nearly a mark to Bizzle. Hocking, tackled. Ball spills for O'Brien in turn. Bizzle snapshot at goal by Clint Bizzle. He's just offline to the right, and he scores a behind. He's kicked three behinds, Clint Bizzle, in this game. The leading goal kickers for Geelong. Three of them have kicked two: Spriggs, Stoneham, and Mench. And Richmond have had uh, a terrific spread: four goals to Rogers, three goals to Brad Ottens, and a couple to Dragosevic, Bowden, Holland, and Tivendale. Richmond. Just using the ball. Look at Tivendale's pass, will you? That was an absolute beauty from the last 40 metres, wasn't it? Oh, magnificent. Yeah, reminiscent of a uh, couple you might have delivered towards the forward line in your day, Gouchy. Ball to the back of the pack. They'll get a goal. Rogers will get five. Five. Five goals to Matthew Rogers from eight kicks. Well, he's certainly been a pest for the Geelong defenders this quarter. <laughs> he's just bobbed up. Great kick here, good left footer, good technique. Great pass here. On to Matthew Knights, just turn around quickly. Rogers has been very, very good in this quarter. Kick four goals. In the Kick turf. four goals, that's a great effort from a forward pocket display. He's been down, he's taken a couple of marks, but this one he gets off the ground. Smart play, goal. So, Getting towards showtime now for the Tigers. Who would have thought they would have won by 11 goals? Maybe plus. Raleigh. Back on the ground moments ago for Riccardi, who's now off. Bitterscombe. Knights. Bitterscombe's had 23 touches. Matty Knights, kick number 20, or possession number 20, I should say. Not a good kick. Benny Graham back in defence. Oh, thumping kick. Right the centre half forward. Mooney was in the contest. Ottens was pushing. Burke. Poyas. Not a good kick. Clears Graham. McGrath under pressure. Swap Fiora. Slap forward. He goes go. again. Go. Let's, hope, go. He kicks it. Let's hope he kicks it oh. almost. It's going to make amends for that third quarter error. Don't keep reminding him, Gatsby. <laughs> <Gatchi. laughs> you keep mentioning it. It's hard not to when you can see him actually doing it from about 20 metres away. Beautiful kick in. Steinford. <laughs> Tristan Lynch. <laughs> we'll have nightmares about this game. 
Well, at least he's been played in, playing in a winning team. That's right. It's amazing. Steinford. They still have nightmares, but anyway, up goes Holland, and he's going to get a free kick. Probably the predictable play of Geelong, just kicking it long all the time, hasn't really helped him today. They haven't used that short option there, and the Tigers defenders have been able to get numbers back, because they know Geelong's going to kick it long. That's their game plan. Well, the kick across the full back line has been gathered by Poyas. Poyas runs outside his defensive 50, kicks in towards the uh, middle of the ground. Andrew Calloway, he's got King. King fumbled a couple of times early, but since then he's been pretty good, Clinton King. 18 possessions around the middle of the ground, and that kick is effective, and this young fella may get a goal in the uh, last two or three minutes of the match. He's shown a little bit today, though. He's been very good. His kicking's very good. He kicked a goal with his first kick, I think, in footy last yes, week. Yes, he did. He gets yep. Aaron Fiora we're talking about. Going for the Tigers' 22nd goal. Beautiful. Lovely kick. kick. The boot. He can play. It is a goal. A great kick by Fiora. Tiger fans have had plenty to cheer about. Right from the start of the game, they put the heat on the, the Cats around the middle of the ground. And they've continued on beautifully. 22 goals, 8, 140. Lead Geelong 10 11 71. Uh, that's uh, 69 points, Couchy. Yes, it is, Robbo. Yes, it is. And they've done very well today, the Tigers. Thanks for rubbing it in. Well, I think Richmond have got a terrific Thank bunch of players. Yeah. And if they get it right, which they have today, they're a threat to beat anyone. Raleigh accepts the ball from the ruck contest. Oh, Gee, that was mark. a good mark, wasn't it, by Minch? Oh, he's not paying. What for? What was the bloke in the middle doing? The umpire. Raleigh follows up and then kicks about two out of ten. Well, the umpire didn't see because he was on the blind side, but the mid... It has to have been a mark. in the middle, should it? Yeah, it was a mark. I wonder whether we might get a chance. We will. Oh, that's a mark. And that is definitely a mark. There's no doubt that he marked that ball. That's where the other but central umpire is going to come in. But this is what play. amazes me. We've got three umpires on the ground. They still make blues like that. Well done, O'Brien. O'Brien gets Geelong's first goal for the quarter. Been a long time coming. They were 10 goals eight at three-quarter time. They've added one goal three. Richmond have added six goals, three against that. Yeah, it's a bit too little, too late scenario here for Geelong. 11-11-77 to 22 goals, 8 140 in Richmond. They've been absolutely dominant all day. Mooney's had a quiet one. Barry Stoneham's tried hard. Business has been good for Geelong. There hasn't been too many others. So inside the last couple of minutes, important game percentage-wise as well for Richmond. This will get them closer towards being back on a level keel. Their percentage was 87 before today. It'll be up into the 90s now. Spriggs well tackled. Tivendale gang tackled as well. Boyas hurled it out. Daffy went back a long way, but it was good work. Andrew Calloway, bit of a spray out. Harrison. It was all right, actually. Yeah, <laughs> in the end it was. Well, he meant the kicker to him, and he hit him. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it went 20 metres. Oh, <laughs> give him a break. He kicks with his right boot. Went via the cape, but uh, inside 50, ben Holland home. pushing down. Well, it's good to see Ben Holland playing well today. He needs to look with Richardson out, and he's done that today. Just inconsistent, though, Ben Holland, on some days. Just doesn't do enough. Seven marks, 20 possessions today. Eight kicks, 12 handballs. He's kicked two goals, one. He's had a big day. But he needs... Look, he's only young, so he's going to improve. Or importantly, he's, uh, he's just another target, isn't he? Yeah. He's another tall player that can play in two or three positions around the ground. Look at that the face of him. He's had a good day today. Fiora has been very good in this last quarter too. He's done some nice things. He's kicking both sides of his body. Right foot there to Holland. Squared the ball up. Good vision. And Holland hasn't let him down. I think he's a slightly better kick than his brother. He uh, seems to... Better technique. He has, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, slightly. Yeah. 
23-8 to 11-11. So Mark Thompson looking at a big defeat by his team, Geelong, against Richmond here today at Colonial Stadium. Raleigh gathers and then uh, kicks it high in the air. Marking contest, uh, Minch taken away by Knights. Harrison just hunts the footy, Ben Harrison. When he comes on the ground, he always gets quite a bit of it. Poyas kicks it into the pocket. The mark is taken by Fiora. Well, this would be uh, a reasonable finish for this young bloke, Aaron Fiora. Kicked the goal earlier in the term. I think it'll be discussed for a little while, his error in the third term, but uh, from his career point of view, I think it's a, a bit of a lesson that he may have learnt today. So we'll watch him with the last kick of the game. Deep in the pocket, has kicked a behind, has he? Yes. So the last kick of the game by Aaron Fiora, along with Mark Dragasevic, two of the youngsters that the Tigers can look forward to for plenty of football. Great theme song, the Tigers. Lots of supporters here at Colonial Stadium. And their players have not let them down. They've absolutely slaughtered Geelong. Richmond 23-9-147. Big winners, 70 points over Geelong. 11-11-77. Well, a fantastic.